Texas Raiders. And we are underway in a ball game that will count in the standings. Taken at the three yard line. Out to the 10, the 15, 20. Good return. He almost broke it. Returns to the 31 yard line. There was a fumble. The officials may rule that the ground caused the fumble. No, it did not. And it will be the Raiders. So the Raiders with the break on the turnover. A game when mistakes will, of course, take their toll, I believe, more than during a regular game. And this is Mike Noble. Number 53 recovering the fumble. Let's take another look. Well, Frank Anz is the man who uh, used to run the special teams for the Kansas City Chiefs. He worked on it very much this week, and this was his biggest worry. They seemed like they had a big play, but the returner up the middle loses the football. The Raiders come up with it. That's what you mentioned at the beginning of the football game, Charlie. Big turnovers is what Frank Anz wanted to stay away from it, and his pride and joy, the special teams, is what happened. Let's take, let's go back. Let's rerun that again. Let's rerun that last one. The umpire has stepped forward to stop the clock. The instant replay official is, of course, the, the same rules as regular, because it is a regular game, to see if the ground caused the fumble. If it did, then uh, the Kansas City Chiefs will retain possession, or if it was stripped, it's, now, it's inconclusive from that angle, that We don't know whether or not he had it as he went down or, or whether the ground caused it. Yeah. We can't tell from that angle. The rule, of course, he has to have possession when his knee hits because that's when the ball is down or blown dead. That was a fumble. Yes. And it is ruled a fumble, and the Raiders have the ball and a big opportunity at the Kansas City 31. And Vince Evans is the quarterback. And that number 53 is Mike Noble, the man who recovered the fumble. And the Raiders open up very conservatively on the ground, giving to Craig Ellis. Ellis out of San Diego State. Now let's look at that offensive set. Evans, Jim Brown, not the Jim Brown. This one has an E on it. He's from Boston College. Ellis, David Williams, Carl Aikens, and uh, Mario Perry. He, of course, being the tight end. And that offensive line, Totolo, Black, Regent, Wilkerson, and Wright. Go, go. Go, 27-yard line, second down and six. Evans, a little play action, stands in. He can scramble, goes deep, has a man, hits a touchdown, Los Angeles Raiders. Carl Aiken opens the scoring for Los Angeles, a 27-yard touchdown pass. 31 yards on the drive in two plays. All right, Vince Evans, a nine-year NFL veteran. What he did best when he was with the Chicago Bears was scramble, move around in the pocket. He's starting this afternoon because of that ability. Moves up in the pocket. There's where the experience pays off. Carl Aikens, a nice pattern into the corner of the end zone for the score. Akins in his first year, he's been in training camp in 85, 86, and 87 with the Raiders, the Dallas Cowboys, the Green Bay Packers, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and St. Louis. And this, of course, is his first regular season touchdown. Mark Wilson is holding, and David Hardy with the extra point, but there's a flag. Hold the phone just a moment. There is a flag. Now, we're going to have a lot of those kind of penalties of the reporting of the wrong numbers, of the the wrong formations, and a lot of the basic things. You're that, right. Uh, and that's just going to be part of the of the story of today. Well, this is what happened. Bird number 50 ran in late. He didn't know he was on the team. When he got in there, he simply lined up. Because he has the number 50 on his back and he's playing a backfield position, even though it is a, an extra point attempt, he's got to report to the officials just in case he's going to go out for a pass. He did not do that, and that's why the illegal procedure penalty was called. Mark Wilson to hold. Paul Dufault is snapping David Hardy to attempt the point after. Good snap, and it is up, and it is good. And the score, the Los Angeles Raiders 7, the Kansas City Chiefs nothing. We'll be back with the kickoff. And they got the fumble recovery, Mike Noble, on the kickoff return by Kevin Wyatt. He had a pretty good kickoff return of about 28 yards out to the 31-yard line. And uh, Wyatt again is deep, and David Hardy again will kick off. And then it was Evans to Aikens, 27 yards in the score, and the Raiders on top, 7 to nothing. And we're only 55 seconds into the ballgame. 
Again, in case you just join us, a very sparse crowd. The temperature 105 degrees, which is about 120 on the floor of the Coliseum. This is Ken Lacey on the return. Lacey out to the 20 yard line. Eddie Anderson with the tackle. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown. Charlie, you mentioned all of the experience that Carl Aikens, number 83, the receiver has. One of the reasons Vince Evans starting is because of all that experience. He feels the rush and steps up in the pocket. At 32, Vince Evans still has a lot of physical ability left. Now the pattern on the corner, uh, Carl Aiken just turned Jack Epps, number 25, all the way around. Epps does not have nearly as much experience as uh, does Aikens, and that's the reason for the touchdown. For Kansas City, this is Ken Lacey in their first running play, their first play from scrimmage in reality. And it'll go to the 24-yard line. So it's a gain of four. It'll be second down and six as Jim Ellis makes the tackle for the Raiders. Offensively for Kansas City, Matt Stevens out of UCLA is the quarterback with Chris Smith and Ken Lacey, the running backs. Montagna and Brown, the wide receiver, Stein Koss, the tight end. That offensive line of Hoppick, Harvey, Thompson, Boyd, and Nelson. Now that offensive line has been changed, and I'll give you the update on that offensive line right after this play. And again, very conservative. No, it's a good, it's a very conservative handoff to Lacey, but a good fake by Stevens. But it's only going to pick up a yard to the 25-yard line, so it's going to be third down and five. That offensive line has been changed. It is Hoppick at left tackle. At left guard is James Harvey. Jim Peterzak, who just came in, becomes the key. He's the center. He's a 10-year veteran. Arlen Thompson, who was the center, moves to right guard. And uh, Hoppick is at right tackle, and Dubiago is at left tackle. Now, the Chiefs are keeping nine offensive linemen in an inordinate number of offensive linemen. So they have been moving them around on a daily basis. A pump fake, and the pass is incomplete at the 34-yard line. Eric Brown, the intended receiver. So it will be fourth down and five, and the kicking team will come in for Kansas City. So now we'll take another look. The Raiders have a big opportunity here. They're in a deep zone. They certainly are in a deep zone. This receiver got mugged after a while. He's all, all over the place, and it uh, seems like it's going over the back by the defensive back. That's Tony Tillman, who was in the Raider camp, by the way, early in uh, 1987, cut before the regular season began. Kelly Goodburn will be kicking now. He's been in the Kansas City camps the last two years. And Lance Harkey, rookie from Illinois, is the deep back on the return, and he feels it at the 26-yard line. Looks for a block, gets a nice green block, and returns to the 34-yard line. 48 yards on the kick and a nine-yard return. Bruce Holmes makes the tackle, and we have a flag on the play. And we have an ineligible wide receiver, or an eligible man downfield for Kansas City. As you know, the two wide men can only go before the uh, before the punt. They go downfield, and they will refuse it. And the Raiders will take over on their own 34-yard line. We'll take a timeout. 12:27 left to go. We're in the first quarter. Raiders lead it seven to nothing. Downs or anything besides that big one, do they? They got one under there that you can't see. You can't see that one. Is that the only one? Yeah, I think it is. So you just got to catch it whenever you can. Is that right, Dennis? Is the, the clock and the thing above there? Is that above the tunnel? Is that the only one besides the big Nissan one? Yeah. So we can't. So we got to go with the big Nissan. One. It's in the shade. Yeah. Forty-seven. How many? How many touchdown passes? One, two, three, four. Boom, Five touchdown passes. They beat Buffalo forty-seven to six. And a check of the 10 minute ticker Cleveland defeating New England 20 to 10 we'll give those scores to you in just a moment as the Raiders start to move on offense just inside their own 35 yard line. And the give is to Rob Harrison. Harrison, a rookie, 10th round draft choice this year out of Cal State Sacramento. And he goes to the 39-yard line. 
So we'll give him five and mark it second and five. All right, Cleveland defeats New England. Chicago wallops Philadelphia 35 to three. San Diego just edges Cincinnati 10 to nine. These, of course, the early games. Washington That's leading a St. Louis. That is a surprise because St. Louis had a lot of crossover players. New Orleans 37, Rams 10. That's a surprise also, I think. We'll come back to that panel again in a moment. Evans scrambling. Good scrambler. Throws on the run. Knocked away. Good defensive play on that left corner by Trent Bryant. Now, the Kansas City Chiefs, their strength of this team will be in that secondary. Interesting enough, interestingly enough, that is their strength of their regular team. And that also was, as we take a look at, at some more scores, that also was a big mistake by receiver David Williams showing his youth and inexperience. He didn't come back to the football. That should have been a completion. The fault of the receiver, the defensive back made a nice play, but again, the receiver could have prevented it. You should take a look. Indianapolis, Hogeboom. 47 to 6. Hogeboom, five touchdown passes. And the game's starting with ours. Miami, an early lead over Seattle. And the Jets an early lead over Dallas. Third down and five. Evans from the shotgun. Has good protection. It's high. It's wobbly. Has a man wide open at the 40-yard line. And it's a touchdown scoring Carl Aikens. 21 yards. And the first down. Ted Nelson, the strong safety, was a man who had dropped back in the coverage, and he was playing off of it. And you wonder why someone who looks as good as uh, Carl Aikens does right now has not been playing in the NFL. He's been in certainly enough camps. That time, Vince Evans, the duck that he threw, wobbling yeah. all the way. But Aikens had beaten the defender by so much that it didn't matter. He could have uh, put that, uh, uh, just, just punted the ball downfield. I think Aikens would have received it. First down at the Kansas City 40. Raiders out in front by a score of 7 to nothing. Give this to Craig Ellis. Ellis from San Diego State. By the way, let's take a look at that Kansas City defense. I don't think that we have shown it to you as yet. And this will be the basic set, Walker, Faulkner, Mumphrey, and Lindstrom. And they are going with the 4-3. Holloway, Span. Now notice it's Span. It's not Spaney. That's Span. That's a different person. And Bruce Holmes. And uh, Bryant, Thomas, Nelson, and Epps in the secondary. Second and 10, just outside the Kansas City 40-yard line. The temperature is soaring above 105 degrees. Here is Ellis. And Ellis goes just inside the 35. Let's call it a gain of five. And it'll be third down and five as Jeff Faulkner makes the tackle. The heat is going to cause another complication from the coaching standpoint. Most of the coaches that we talked to this week we're not planning on a lot of substitutions because they figured we have somebody in there. At least we know what they can do. And the next unknown is sitting on the bench. So we're not going. We're not going to be. It's another drop a lot off. Of people. Right. Another, another drop, drop off. off. That's a, that's yeah. a problem. But with this heat, they're going to have. Oh yes, to they're going to have to. The first preseason game a football player plays, his conditioning is way down, and that's the, the kind of a situation we're in here today, today, especially with this great heat. They mark it officially third down and four as Evans throws, has a man wide open, and it is. Greg Latham, the rookie out of Cincinnati, and he goes to the two-yard line, 32 yards. And it'll be first down and goal to go. Carlton Thomas finally made the stop for Kansas City. Let's take another look. You can credit the uh, Raider coaching staff for this one. This is a crossing pattern. He starts on the far right side, does Greg uh, Latham, and crosses all the way across the middle while receivers are going the other way. The, Raider, the Chiefs were in a man-to-man -man coverage, and they got crossed up going across. That's why Lathan was so wide open. So what the Raiders have done in reality, as seen so far, they have plugged in the regular Raider offense as much as they possibly could with the people on hand. Yeah, they're going to play Raider ball. Those yeah. big offensive linemen they can put in there with long passings. First down, goal to go, two-yard line. And diving for the score is Craig Ellis. So the Raiders have scored their second touchdown on a drive of 76 yards. Take a look at it. It doesn't take a great deal of experience to hop over the top, and that's exactly what he does. In for the score. Different angle. Lead blocker coming from the offside at tight end. Good block by... Let's see, that is number 82 for the Los Angeles Raiders. A nice block right. by Ron Wheeler, the tight end, allowing the running back to get into the end zone. Mark Wilson to hold. Hardy with the extra point. It is good. And the Los Angeles Raiders are in front of the Kansas City Chiefs, 14 to nothing, and we're only five and a half minutes into the game.
the clock moving very yes. quickly. Very <laughs> yeah, let's come back. Let's come back with that. 76 and seven plays, Dennis. 65. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Okay, 65. What? I'm surprised they're going into. Uh, I'm okay. surprised they're going into a shotgun. Can I, uh, <laughs> how about Rod Hill uh, when they're on the Raiders on defense, number 38 black? Yeah, <laughs> only because he's a first-round uh, cowboy, and it's somebody we can talk about. You mean on the extra points? You mean on, on the, the extra points? On the shotgun? Okay. All right. We'll have to. When they go to the shotgun, I see if we can pick out who the center is. You know. Sean Regent is what we have. That's who we, we never know. Yeah. You know, they may go to default on the shotgun. Could we have the other clock? Could we have the uh, temperature? Raiderettes enjoying it so far as Los Angeles is in front of Kansas City by a score of 14 to nothing, and the temperature, as you can see, that's as high as the uh, as the thermometer goes here in the Coliseum, and it is 105. That's as you notice is in the shade. So uh, on the field, it's uh, at least 120, and inside the black uniforms, it's going to be even higher than that. David Hardy kicking off. Kevin Wyatt is the deep back on the return. You'll have Parker and Lacey on wide on the wings. And Wyatt, who fumbled the opening kickoff return, has it at the five. And this time he returns to the 20-yard line, and he holds on to the football. And it will be a first down as Chetty Carr makes the tackle for the Raiders. The scoring drive, I had the yardage wrong, is seven plays. It was 65 yards. It took two minutes, 55 seconds. And Craig Ellis scored it from a couple of yards out. Ellis, by the way, spent four years in the Canadian Football League and in 1986 played nine games with the Miami Dolphins. Kansas City now down 14 to nothing. Fake on the pitch out, a handoff back inside. Up the ball off. He was just throwing it away. It was up for grabs, and Eric Brown was the intended receiver. He was the closest one there. But uh, there was a marker on the league and was used to officiating games with not a lot of folks in the stands. So he has some experience. He has some experience in, uh, in open stadiums, you might say. One of the thoughts about this game this afternoon, Charlie, at that time there was a blitz by Leonard Jackson, the outside linebacker for the Raiders. So at the coaching staff, if you take a look, as we mentioned, the sparse crowd here at the Coliseum, maybe the coaching staff would say, hey, let's get rid of the blitz. Let, let's get rid of some of the complicated uh, plays that we have. And uh, they've done that so far. Ken Lacey is uh, back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Let's see where they mark it. Yeah, we'll mark it for no gain. It's going to be third down and 10. Ted Chapman was there to make the play. There's Frank Gans, the head coach of Kansas City. They're using a messenger service, sending the plays in with either running backs, wide receivers, or tight ends. We'll go back to the last play. Charlie, this is just a basic handoff. I mean, these are things that these guys have done in high school and in college. A uh, missed, uh, missed block inside, but that's the easiest thing you can coach. It's a handoff, a, a straight handoff. Stevens is going to throw a four-man rush by the Raiders. He has pressure. He gets it off. The pass is complete. It's going to be a first down for Kansas City to Kenny Nash. Rod Hill makes the tackle, and the Kansas City Chiefs have their second first down of the ballgame. Now, Rod Hill may be the most experienced and certainly at one time was considered to be the thought of a star in the NFL, but he's beaten badly by Kenny Nash. Hey, that's a big play by Nash, number 85, a nice pattern, and Hill takes him a while to get back into the coverage, but uh, that's, a, that's a pattern that any NFL player would be proud of. Nash, of course, from San Jose State, a rookie free agent. Training camp, he was with the New York Jets. First down, Kansas City at their own 47-yard line, and this is Chris Smith. Smith to the 46-yard line of Los Angeles, and Eddie Anderson makes the tackle. 
And one of the problems that uh, right now facing Kansas City is the fact they're down 14 to nothing and you do not have a catch up offense. You have to stay with your basic game plan. You cannot come off your game plan like a veteran ball club could do. No, as Frank Ann said earlier, we've got to rely on the two long drives. Let's see if he gets one here. He's got one started at least. Second down and three at the 46 yard line. And here's Lacey. And Lacey goes to the 41, has five, and has the first down. Jim Ellis and Ron Foster make the tackle. And I think you can see the effect of the heat that's starting to have on some of the players. That time, Ken Lacey very slow in getting up. Uh, running the football out there in the seat, 105 degrees. First game of the year. Takes a lot of conditioning. Another point that we want to talk even more in length after this play is that the scouts in the coach's box are scouting not only what the opposition is doing, but what their team is doing. We'll play action fake. It is knocked away and almost intercepted. It is incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. As Leonard Jackson is the man who knocked it down for the Los Angeles Raiders, Ellis was going for the interception and couldn't pick it off. Because you are now seeing, they are now seeing these players, their own, as well as the opposition for the first time. So it's not only what the opposition is doing and what their defenses or offenses are doing, but what are what are what are our guys doing? Where are, where is our strength? Where can we go? Where can we throw to? And so halftime is going to be interesting. They'll be making a lot of adjustments, a lot of changes. The handoff is to Lacey. He has a yard to the 40 yard line. It's going to be third down and nine as Leonard Jackson is again there along with Daryl Bird. And as Frank Ann said, and Tom Flory said the same thing when we talked to him, he said, there will be, like any other football game, there will be a hero and there will be a goat. <laughs> That's certainly the truth. Yeah. Matt Stevens, the quarterback that Frank Ann says, has started to go with this afternoon. One of the reasons that he is starting, Matt Stevens, is because Homer Jones, the, uh, excuse me, Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator for uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, had uh, uh, Matt Stevens as uh, a quarterback at UCLA for many years, so he understands the system. That's why he started. Stevens can scramble for it. A flag is down. He got the first down, but usually that means a holding call against Kansas City, and they'll bring it back. Stevens, of course, is uh, his big claim to fame, the 86 Rose Bowl game, the 45-28 win over Iowa that he quarterback replacing the injured David Norrie. And David Norrie is starting today for the That's New York right. Jets. He certainly is. Yes. A real twist, isn't yes. it? Holding offense number 58. That's a 10-yard penalty. It's third down. That's an Arlen Thompson, the right guard for Kansas City. And another respect, we're in the Coliseum in Los Angeles, and you have to go back now a few years, but the quarterback for the Raiders is Vince Evans, the Trojan from USC, and the quarterback, Matt Stevens, the Bruin from UCLA for Kansas City. And until UCLA moved out to the Rose Bowl, uh, this was the great grounds of the confrontation between those two great football schools. One of them, of course, is my alma mater. <laughs> throw that in. We're not going to say which one. No, no, no not now. <laughs> On the draw, and uh, it's not <laughs> that's Chris Smith. You just got to enjoy that kind of a play because that's uh, a little uh, Sandlot action, you might say. Rick Ackerman makes the stop. Yeah, he kind of got <laughs> You like that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. He got, a, <laughs> he got cut up with Arlen Thompson, uh, number 58, and on the trap block and uh, had really nowhere to go. Lance Harkey is set to return the punt of Kelly Goodburn. We're moving on the four minute mark, time remaining in the first quarter. It's a good kickoff. And he's just going to run away and hope that it goes to the end zone. He gets a Kansas City bounce and goes out at the three yard line. And so the Raiders will take over at their own three yard line, a 48 yard quarter. Dallas continues to lead the Jets 7 3 in the first quarter. Here it is Los Angeles 14, Kansas City nothing. And the Raiders have the ball on their own three yard line. And they'll look for just a little bit of running room. This is Rob Harris. Wiggles his way for five out to the eight yard line. It's going to be second down and five. Chris Lindstrom made the tackle. Let's go back to uh, four o'clock this morning when we had the aftershock. Uh, we call it the earthquake. There's uh, Houston uh, in front of Denver in the first quarter and Green Bay leading Minnesota. That was not your first uh, earthquake. Oh, <laughs> no. by the way, baseball. No. We'll get to the earthquake. Well, we'll save it. Okay. <laughs> Detroit won. Toronto nothing. Detroit win. Then uh, they're in the playoffs. If Toronto wins, they play again tomorrow on NBC. All right, second down and five. 
Craig Ellis to the 11, gain of three. It's going to be third down and two. It's the first time I've ever teased an earthquake story, but this is not your first earthquake. Right? No, uh, a number of years ago, playing in a football game in Japan, the Japan Bowl, as a matter of fact, very sparse crowd out in the field. We went out to warm up, came back in, and there was this great rumbling, and one of the players stood up and said, well, there's not many of them out there, but they're excited about American football. <laughs> we didn't find out until after the game that it was a short tremor. <laughs> you kidding. I must tell you what I did this morning. I had a little trouble going back to sleep. It took about an hour and a half. I, find, I put on my warm-ups, and I put my billfold and my change by the door. So that, and the shoes were the best, so if it happened again, I was out and gone. There's a fumble, but did the ground cause it? He may blow the play dead, and that was Rob Harrison. But uh, it is an exciting way to start the day when you guys have the earthquake. And also, there were three trimmers. And uh, the one at 7.15 was about a 3.5. I was lying in bed with my eyes wide open saying, <laughs> now, is this the move? I think so. I, as a reporter came on just after that happened. I turned the TV on. He said, this is what you do. Take your shoes, put them by the bed, and turn them over. This way, your shoes are by the bed if you have to leave. And if any glass breaks, it won't get into the shoes. Good yes, idea. That's very good. The other one is sleep in your shoes like I did, which is not that bad. OK, here's Vince Gamache to kick. And Kevin Wyatt to return. Gamach was Seattle last year and played his collegiate ball at Cal State. Fullerton has pressure and gets a good kickoff. Kickers that look pretty good. Taken at the 49-yard line by Wyatt, and he is decked in his track. Oh, 40 yards on the kick, and down was Eddie Anderson, also with Seattle. Played on their special teams last year. And he, he makes a good play. He certainly does. Now, remember, Kevin White fumbled the kickoff earlier. He's nervous out yeah. there because he's an NFL veteran. He's back there because he's handled punts and kicks. It's the worst possible case scenario for a punt returner. A ball you have trouble handling, and you're deciding whether or not to call a fair catch, and you make the wrong choice and get drilled. And as soon as you make the choice, I guess that's when you realize. Is there a, because you return kicks in college, there's, and you return kicks in. Uh, yes, I got smarter from then on. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's, a, it's not a fun thing to do. You know, you're out there, you're forced to go out and return it, but I don't know very many people who say, I want to return punts or kicks in the NFL. Ralph Stockhammer, the ball carrier. Rick Ackerman makes this stop. A gain of a couple through the 48-yard line. Second down and eight. One minute, 26 seconds left to go in the first. Raiders on top, 14 to nothing. Kansas City has had one drive going, and they couldn't sustain it. And this is Robert Parker. Three yards to the 45. It's going to be third down and five. So. Kansas City now with Stockhammer and Parker, and they've gone to their backup running backs, primarily because of the heat. They've got to, they've got to, both teams got to show everybody. They have 45 men squads. Uh, Kansas City brought 56 people yeah. here with them, but they had to declare yesterday yeah. the 45 that they would dress. So somewhere walking around the Coliseum, there are 11 players who are with Kansas City, but who are not in uniform. Steven throws high over the middle, and it is caught by the second receiver. And that is number 86, Eric Brown. He intended to hit the tight end. And Brown takes it on the carom at the 35-yard line, a gain of 10, and the first down. Once again, the Raiders were in man-to-man -man coverage. The tight end underneath, that's Stein Cost, number 80. He's the intended receiver. Good coverage on the man-to-man, -man. and of course, Brown, number 86, to mop up behind him for the reception. Good reaction by Eric Brown out of Tulsa. He was a free agent with St. Louis earlier this year. First down at the 35-yard line. And here's Robert Parker. And Parker's got, he gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. As we take the countdown to the end of the first quarter, Mike Noble makes the tackle for the Raiders, and the first period is in the books. Los Angeles 14, Kansas City nothing. We'll be back for the second period from the Coliseum in the heat. You're... <laughs> we were doing a scouting report as we go on. We might as well let everybody in on it. And uh, right after this play, we'll have uh, the Jimmy Cephalo scouting report of the first quarter of the level of the play. Oh, well, good way to put a pressure on this. Yeah, I would tell it the way it is. Little play action fake and going deep into double coverage. It is intercepted. No, incomplete in the end zone. Almost intercepted as Eddie Anderson went up for it and could not bring it down. Now, your assessment of play thus far? Well, several. One, the, the large amount of open field missed tackles that we've seen a lot of as we take a look at the play. Matt Stevens thought he had man-to-man -man coverage, but there was a free roving safety in the middle of the field who comes over and nearly comes up with the interception. Again, a misread by the quarterback. 
Char, I think there's been a, an inordinate amount of missed tackles in the open field, a lot of arm tackling going on. Also, a lot of indecision by running backs. Watch them make the mistake of not making the decision to cut up field or to bounce to the outside. Stevens from the shotgun has pressure, and he is sacked. And that is the first sack of the game. And Ron Brown, the uh, number eight draft choice of San Diego out of USC, has the first sack. All right, number 94, Rick Goltz with the sack. A lot, a lot of pressure. Three Raiders. And <laughs> Stevens, is, he's not supposed to grab onto the, uh, the defender. They're supposed to grab onto him. He was holding on for dear life on his way down. And Rick Goltz uh, with a smile and the celebration as Kelly Goodburn will be kicking to Lance Harkey. On the ten, Lance. <laughs> High and short. And it goes out on the far side. And the mark it out at the 18-yard line. So it's not that bad a kick. He would like to have been a little closer to the goal line. 28 yards on the punt. We've got a timeout. And the Raiders have the lead, 14 to nothing. Los Angeles 14, Kansas City nothing with 14-15. That is the time remaining in the second quarter here in the college. Here in the 105 degrees. And jumping to the outside is Rob Harrison. And Harrison goes out of bounds at the 31-yard line. So he has 13 and the first down before Jack Epps stops him for Kansas City. Miami and Seattle tied in the second quarter at 7-7. Dallas and the Jets. So that's those scores remaining the same as they have been. Houston leads Denver 7-3 at Mile High Stadium in the second period. Green Bay continues to lead Minnesota 7 0 in the first. Kansas City nothing. And the Raiders have the ball at their own 31 yard line. A little play action fake by Vince Evans as he rolls out. Has pressure from behind. At 32 years of age, he can still scramble. Now he sets, throws deep, has a man. It is there. It is complete. At the 36 yard line of Kansas City, Greg Latham, 33 yards, but credit the quarterback, Vince Evans. He scrambled enough to set it up. And he certainly doesn't look like a 32-year-old quarterback, does he? One of the knocks against Evans when he was playing for the Bears in the NFL was that he tried to scramble too much, but he has nowhere to go here. What else can he possibly do? And he also had enough athletic ability. If he wanted to, at that point, he could have run down the sideline for maybe 15 or 20 yards. Now, let's take a look at the wide receivers. In this instance, all bets are off. Forget about the pattern. It's kind of back when you were in grade school. They said, go to the blue Chevy and make a right. I'll fake it to you. Well, Aikens does the job, or rather, Greg Lathan does makes a good point of running back to the football, making the catch. Nice play by the Raiders. And a first down to the Kansas City 36-yard line. Ethan Horton is the ball carrier. He, by the way, was Kansas City's number one draft choice a couple of years ago. And John Walker makes the tackle. Ethan Horton on the carry. 28-yard line. Gain of eight. He was also tried, by the way, uh, Ethan Horton was, as a, uh, a tight end, big target. The, the knock eight. against him was that he ran straight up and down. A, a very large, large man. 6'4", 220. And uh, they tried him at tight end for a while. Didn't work out there. Was released by the Raiders this past year and not brought back. Second down and two. Raiders on the move. They lead 14 to nothing. They pretty well dominated this ball game. Evans looking good. Rolls out again. Now he can run for it. And he's to the 25, he's to the 20, cuts back, he's to the 10, and he's down at the 8-yard line. He has 20 yards. It'll be first down and goal to go is Kevin Wyatt, who's the man who tripped him up at the 8-yard line. Wyatt from North Little Rock played his collegiate ball at the University of Arkansas and was with San Diego last year. Evans also averaged six and a half yards as a quarterback yes. playing for the Chicago Bears. He can do it all. He's got those quick feet. Now watch the end of this play. This is the interesting part. Man-to-man -man coverage downfield. That's why he's got so much room to run. Here's the veteran. Here comes right here. There's the experience. Oh, he went down. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, I can find that through. hole in the ground. Yeah, all right. I'm going to hit it. First down, goal to go, eight-yard line. And here's Ethan Horton. That is a fumble. And Kansas City says they have the ball. They're going to rule it down, I believe. Cornelius Dozier is the man who had the ball. Let's see uh, if they rule the ball dead. I think that you're right. Here's another look. 
Hard to tell there. Looked as if he was down. It does look appear as if his knee was down. He was nearly sitting on the ground as he's trying to lunge for extra yardage. So it'll be second down goal to go. And the uh, we're going to have a momentary timeout here for the instant replay officials to take a look. And uh, we'll go back and take a look at it. All right, that's why I talked about angle. Ethan Horton straight up and down. It's one of the reasons for this fumble. See him going through the hole. You got to get smaller than that. Got to get him, make yourself small. Right, knees down, and yeah. uh, the ball's still in possession. That's so right. it's a good play. The fumble came after the knee was down. No question about that. And it'll be second down, goal to go. No fumble, second down. Once again, a correct ruling by the instant replay officials. Yeah, second by down Charlie goal. Jones. Yeah, <laughs> well, that means they agree with us. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm alone. What happened to, no, what happened to my partnership? No, 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 I agree with you, too. <laughs> it's your call. Nice call, right? Thanks. All right, second down goal to go at the four-yard line. I'm going to suggest that Evans here, of his, another little timeout between the umpire and uh, the umpire. Second down, goal to go. Little play action. He's going to score on the bootleg. Regardless of what you think about this game, or which side you take, or if you even bother to take a side at all, and the strike and management and everything, there will be some bright lights in various ball games of players who will get another look or another opportunity. Vince and Evans, Vince Evans is yeah, going to be one yeah, of them. He's clearly one of yeah. them. He said he just wanted another opportunity. What we mentioned before, Charlie, they're in man to man coverage. They're going with the running backs because they've got man to man coverage. You see the defender in the upper left hand part of your corner, and yet not even looking at Vince Evans. He's man to man on the receiver. And that allows the, uh, the crafty veteran to walk into the end zone. Well, I like the crafty veteran. 82 yards on the drive, six plays. Extra point is good. And it's 21 to nothing. Los Angeles in front of Kansas City. 10 04 left to go in the first half. But it's lonely, too. And that's a small wave. There was a small wave working there, no? Yeah. <laughs> More like a, a small ripple. <laughs> Riptide just right under. David Hardy will be kicking off. Kevin Wyatt is. The deep back, it is high and short, and Wyatt will take it at the nine yard line. He's to the 15, the 20, 25, 30, and a good return outside the 35 to the 36. No, they'll call it the 35 yard line. And Ron Brown makes the tackle as Matt Stevens comes out for Kansas City. Chiefs down 21 to nothing. You've got to start throwing and play catch up. But do you have enough in your game plan to be able to do it at this time? Ten minute ticker, Miami Seattle still tied. Dallas stretching it out over the Jets. They now lead by seven. Houston, Denver 7-3, and Green Bay continues to lead Minnesota 7-0. Here it is, Los Angeles 21, Kansas City nothing. The Raiders on top as the Chiefs go to work from the 35. Stevens back to throw, and it is incomplete as he goes to Rod Jones, the eighth round draft choice of the Giants this year. Played his collegiate ball with the Huskies of Washington. Second down and ten. As you mentioned earlier, Matt Stevens has been ineffective as a quarterback. Stevens has completed only two of seven for 24 yards, so he hands off to Chris Smith. And uh, he'll pick up three, let's call it the 38-yard line. And it's going to be third down and seven in the sixth inning. Detroit continues to lead Toronto, and they are a game up on the Blue Jays. And a victory by Detroit today, they're in the playoffs. And if Toronto comes from behind to win, then that would mean that tomorrow on NBC, that uh, the final game of the season, of the regular season, before the league championship series to be seen on NBC, uh, will be underway. So, little play action fake, pressure from behind, slips away, good move, another pump fake, wobbly pass, but it's complete. A credit that to the quarterback, Matt Stevens. He had to fight his way out of all kinds of problems before he wobbled one down to Eric Brown for 21 yards and the first down. Eddie Anderson made the tackle. Yeah, it shows a lot of heads-up play uh, on the part of uh, Matt Stevens. Take a look. He's going to get a lot of pressure from number uh, 97. That's Phil Grimes was all over him for a second, but Stevens, a couple of pump fakes, has enough presence of mind to get it downfield. He's a happy camper because he just completed only his third NFL pass. Happy camper. On a warm day. Here's Parker. Sweep to the right, and he is out of room, and he will lose a yard to the 40 yard line. It's going to be second down and 11 as Rod Foster moved up from that, strong safety. That's exactly what I was talking about before, Charlie. The indecision by a running back. Parker that time clearly had a gap to the inside. The blocker in front of him had his head to the inside. That's how you tell as a running back which way to go. If the blocker has his head inside, you go inside. If he has his head outside, you go outside. 
And that is a his, very young mistake. He had his head in his hands. You say, well, I'm in trouble. For it. <laughs> that's right. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. Second and 11. And that's the thing you were watching for, the Jimmy Seppler scouting report. A play action fake, and it did not fake. Number 92, that is Dan McMillan, who was coming from the outside and uh, has the second sack for the Raiders. Somebody missed an assignment clearly here, Charlie. Somebody's got to pick up Dan McMillan. No one does. He's got a clear shot to the quarterback. There's the, uh, the uh, I didn't pick up the number of the offensive lineman, but he was looking around waiting for a bus or something while Dan McMillan was busy uh, uh, making a bus stop out of Matt Stevens. Outside linebacker coming from the left side. Who should pick him up? Well, a number of people. One should be a running back, but that was play action going the other way. It should have been the onside guard, actually. So that's the guard on the same side as he was coming from. Exactly. All right. Third down and 20. Pressure coming and a scramble underway, and the pass is complete. It'll be close to the first down, but may come up a yard short. Eric short, Brown pulled short. it in. Ron Brown with the tackle. They needed 20. They got 19. Ricky Williams was also there for the Raiders. And now they're going to mark it at the 31-yard line, so it's going to be fourth down and two. And so uh, you're down 21 to nothing. You're moving on the seven-minute mark time remaining in the first half, and so the easy decision is Fourth down and two, you go for it. Stevens has completed four of nine for 66. Do you throw or do you run? I say you run. I would run in this, in, in this instance. You've got an inexperienced quarterback, better chances uh, with the running game. Second back through. And it is going to be close. As one official comes in at the 29, the other one comes in from the sideline at the 30. And so it may not be as close as I thought. And the Raiders could well hold and take over on down. The official spot the ball. And uh, you can see where they spot. That's going to be too close to the chalk mark. It will not be a first down for Kansas City. The Raiders will hold and take over. Jim Ellis leading the defense and will go through the formalities of the change coming out. Make it official. Oh, oh closer oh. we thought. Oh. Let me stand corrected. That's as close to getting a first down as you can get. I mean, that is right at the uh, the nub. That's they interesting. I thought it was no contest. I thought they missed it truthfully by about half a yard. Just shows you what a game like this can do to your eyes. <laughs> first down and 10, and Crow is always one of my favorite watches. That man, Carl Bach, uh, the coach, uh, just putting his hand up to shade his eyes, really had his work cut out for him trying to put an offensive line together until he got Jim Peterzak, the, uh, Peter Zach, the uh, veteran. He had trouble, and a nice run down the sideline. Jim Lacey inside the 15, and he goes out at the 12-yard line. So he picks up 17 yards before Eddie Anderson and Rick Ackerman can bring him down at that point, and it's a first down. We'll take another look. All right, Carl Mock, the offensive line coach, did his work here. I'll tell you, that offensive line with some trap blocking, making a big hole for Ken Lacey, who makes the right decision to go outside and picks up a valuable first down for Kansas City. Now, all of a sudden, the Chiefs now at Los Angeles' 12-yard line. They're down 21 to nothing. A touchdown. You're only down by two. And uh, you've got some momentum going, and uh, they really have not, they've not had the big break that they need or the, you know, the uh, easy touchdown or the good field position that the Raiders have had. So Kansas City could get back into it. Chris Smith carries, Eddie Anderson with the tackle, six yard line, gain of six, second and four. Do you agree with that synopsis? Yeah, very much so. Uh, in this in this in, game, in, I don't, in this, yeah, game, in this no. instance, I don't. Yeah. Uh, 21 points is usually you can forget about it. Yeah. But this is not a regular uh, what we think. This is not a regular 21 points. That's right. They don't count as much stuff. That's not true. Lacey, flag is down. Lacey is down at the two yard line. They'll be close to the first down if the play stands up. And even though we have a flag down on this play, Ricky Williams and Eddie Anderson making the last stop. There have been fewer flags, fewer penalties offside against the Raiders. Fewer penalties than I thought there would be. Yeah, there haven't been a, a great deal of no, penalties. There, you know, there's been the, like the normal amount. Yeah, there's been a lot. You, you can tell it is a warm day on the sidelines. The temperature 105 degrees, and that is official, so it's got to be 120 down there. And it's first down and goal to go for the Kansas City Chiefs at the Raiders just outside the one yard line. Fumble. 
And it is loose, and it is loose again, and it is loose again, and then it is recovered by the Raiders. That is Ted Chapman, who ends up with the football. And so Kansas City self-destructs inside the Raiders' two-yard line. And he actually wasn't touched out. He, he was a little upset because the Chiefs were trying to jump on him, but nobody touched him. There you see that. Lacey never had the ball. No, he didn't. He, it was a miscommunication between the quarterback and the running back. He thought it was a handoff. It turned out to be a pitch. Nobody touches Chapman right there now. His teammates cover him up, and he thinks uh, they're trying to get into a fight with him. We'll be back. Going the uh, Raiders lead of 21 and nothing. Right before the game, we asked Al if he would come on the opening with us. And he said, no, I said, you, we have to give bigger notice. A week's notice where I could draw a 28 share for you on the opening. <laughs> Raiders ball at their own 15-yard line first down. Ethan Horton is the ball carrier, and Bob Harris makes the tackle at the 19. Gain of four, second down and six. We'll go back and look at everything. Cleveland defeating New England. Chicago big over Philadelphia. San Diego little over Cincinnati, but it counts the same. Uh, St. Louis loses to Washington, and that's an upset. Uh, New Orleans over the Rams, and there was no contest there, really. Pittsburgh over Atlanta, 28 to 12. Indianapolis, five touchdown passes by Hogaboom, big over Buffalo, and uh, Detroit losing to Tampa Bay. Evans gives off to uh, Horton again, and Horton goes to the 24 yard line. So it's going to be. Third down and uh, about a, actually about a yard and a half to go for the first down. Lindstrom uh, with the tackle. A game's running parallel to Ayers. Miami and Seattle are still tied. Dallas now, they were down 3-0. Now they're pulling it away. 17 unanswered points. They lead by 14. And they are in the second quarter as we are here. Houston in front of Denver at Mile High Stadium by 7. And Green Bay thus far shutting out Minnesota in the second quarter. Here it is the Los Angeles Raiders 21, the Kansas City Chiefs nothing. And we have just over four minutes left to go in the first half. Ron Wheeler showing motion. And Horton again gets the call. He needed a yard and a half, possibly two. And, and I think there's a fumble, Charlie. There's a good hit inside. It seemed the ball shook loose. And I think they are going to give it over to the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City offense is coming out. And Ben Dryth is explaining it, as you can see, very definitively to the Raiders. Or is it just going to be fourth down? Maybe that's the case. Let's look for the fumble, though. Nice hit inside. Yeah, it is going to be a fourth down, but he does lose the oh, football. The Clearly, football. the ball yes. is out. Yes, they may. Uh, I guess the replay officials may want to take another look at that. No, that's no. the call is it is a fumble. And the Kansas City does have the ball. So Kansas City with their break now at the 25 yard line of Los Angeles. So an exchange of fumbles. They were down at the two and this man Ken Lacey fumbled it there and the Raiders fumble it back. And Lacey picks up five to the 20 yard line of the Raiders and it's second down and five. And the baseball Detroit in the seventh inning continuously Toronto one to nothing in the American League East. And uh, once again, in case you just joined us, uh, Detroit wins today. They are in the playoffs, in the league championship series. And if they lose, then uh, they and Toronto will play again tomorrow. And Lacey, meanwhile, goes out of bounds on the far side, stopping the clock with 3.15. Eddie Anderson with the tackle. And there's a good indication of what I was talking about, Charlie. Lots of arm tackles, many, many missed tackles. That's something you see with inexperienced football players and something you see with the first preseason football game of the year. Ken Lacey's now making some better decisions. He's hitting the hole a little bit quicker. The missed tackles, you will find Ken Lacey gaining many more yards this afternoon because he's making the good choices. First down at the 11-yard line. Kansas City still with an opportunity to try and get back into the ball game. Chris Smith this time with just a yard to the 10. It's going to be second down and nine as Daryl Bird makes a tackle. Now he has been with the Raiders before, including their Super Bowl victory back in 1983. You, you really run the, the entire gauntlet of, uh, of experience. With these players. Some have played uh, 10 year veterans in the CFL, USFL, WFL. Some European players are on the field, not here this afternoon, but throughout the NFL today. And there's some that have kicked around. To others that uh, 
were playing college ball last year. So it is a, a mix and mingle. Second and nine, Matt Stevens. And it is incomplete, and the flag is down. Eric Brown, the attended receiver. Brown played his collegiate ball at Tulsa. 6'2", 180 pounds. Rod Hill had the coverage, and we'll check out the flag. Well, Rod Hill took an arrest. That could be defensive holding rather than pass interference, though, which changes. No, they're going to root it pass interference, and they'll mark it at the spot of the infraction. Defense, pass interference of number 38. That's the first down. First down and goal to go at the one yard. First round draft choice of the Cowboys in 82, traded to the Buffalo Bills with the Lions in 1986. This past year, so he's bounced around. And by the way, for the record book, it was Bob Harris, the linebacker for Kansas City, who recovered that fumble. That has set up this drive and a scoring possibility for Kansas City. Ball is loose. It is a fumble. And the Raiders have it again. Place and Lacey has fumbled. First at the two and this time at the one yard line. There will be a hero and there will be a go. And right now, Ken Lacey is on the horns of a dilemma. That's um, kind of for Yeah, I like it. I think say, I think so. Ken Lacey didn't like it, though, I've got to no, say. No. The first time, it was, seemed to be a mix-up between he and Stevens, the quarterback. Lacey thought it was going to be a straight handoff. It turned out to be a pitch. But that time, there's really no excuse. A straight handoff. Lacey gets hit, tosses the ball down, and his helmet is well on the sideline. And Ron Brown is the man who recovered for a loss. Oh, at their own five-yard line, first down with 2.23 left to go in the first half. And the Raiders up 21 to nothing. Ethan Horton is one of the running backs, and he gets the call. And he stretches across the 10-yard line. Now they'll mark the ball at the 11, I believe. Give him six. It'll be second down and four. As James Harrell, the eight-year veteran from uh, Florida, and played, uh, of course, with Detroit last year, and was their second leading tackler as the man who made the stop here as we're moving on the two-minute mark, a look at the clock, and a look at, right now, very dejected Ken Lacey. So the two-minute warning now being given to both pitches. Raiders on top, 21. <laughs> you fill in the punch now. <laughs> Second down and four. <laughs> and the give is to the first back, Rob Harrison. Harrison is going to move almost to the 15-yard line, and this will be up. Getting a little more cautious on my first down calls after that last one that I've had. And this one is a first down. You look for the Raiders here to just run the football as much as possible. Up 21 to nothing. Uh, no, no use in uh, giving it to Vince Evans to put it up in the air. Although he run the clock, I'd be happy to go in with a big hit. Well, they've had two golden opportunities, and Ken Lacey has fumbled both of them away. I think right now that they just like to, uh, they won't stop the clock with timeouts. They'll like, let's go to halftime and we'll try and cool off and regroup and see what the second half gives us. Ethan Horton, Horton to the 22-yard line, so he has seven. It's going to be second down and three. A look at the clock in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Ted Nelson in on that last tackle. And at halftime, Frank DeFord and his essay, plus all the scores and highlights, and we'll be going back to NFL Live in New York City. Bob Costas will be hosting the halftime. And uh, he can give you an idea not only of uh, a capsule discussion of what's going on here, but also what has happened in the other games and the early games and the reaction of the fans and the reaction uh, of the television. A well-traveled Bob Costas yesterday. Yes. Of course, he was a play-by-play -play man for the uh, Blue Jays and the Detroit Tigers. Did an excellent job. As did you. I enjoyed you in the pregame. Evans going deep into double coverage, and he overthrows everybody, including the man who was trying to make the interception. That's Carlton Thomas. So that stops the clock with 31 seconds. And that was... Second down and three, and if you're going to go deep, second and three is a good time to go. That's the perfect time to go, but uh, they did throw a little caution to the wind, again, with a minute and a half left in the ball game, or in the, in the first half, up with a big lead, deep in your own territory. I don't understand the rationale behind throwing it downfield. Well, maybe that Carl Aikens, the intended receiver, at least was going deep enough so that if it is intercepted, it turns out the same as a punt. There's also another thought. Players want to showcase themselves here. Carl Aikens wants to catch a big touchdown pass. Vince Evans wants to throw another score, and that might be part of it. Third down and three. 
And now we turn conservative as we go for the first down. And this is Craig Ellis that picks up the first down. There was quite a crack back when I said, oh, my. Number 82, Ron Wheeler came inside and just drilled number 49, Ted Nelson, with a crack back block that was legal. But uh, I'll tell you, he, he may have to go back and check his, his eye teeth after that play. And a crack back block that is legal is one that's above the wings. Right, one that starts on the jersey. Starts on the jersey. And we take a look at the countdown of the first half. And at halftime, it is now official. The Los Angeles Raiders 21 and the Kansas City Chiefs nothing. And Jimmy, at the, the beginning of the telecast, I said we would open up the mystery package and we would all find out what was inside. What did we discover in the first half? We found out that the players are rusty, not a lot of experience, and making a lot of mistakes. And that, we, that the Raiders are three touchdowns better than Kansas City, at least in the first half. And we'll be back after these messages. We start the second half, Kansas City kicking off. This is James Hamrick. And fielding the ball at the 14-yard line is Rick Calhoun. And Calhoun on the return. And he is ridden down at the 28, maybe the 29-yard line by Gary Spann out of TCU. And so the offense of the Raiders comes out. Vince Evans, a quarterback. There's been also some conversation this, uh, this past week, as, as you know, that the players call number six. Mark Wilson crossed over the picket line, but he's only been in to hold on uh, extra point attempts thus far. Available, of course, to play at quarterback. Any particular reason on that? Your thoughts? Well, a couple of thoughts. One, I don't know if the Raiders wanted, want him to get hurt. He's sitting behind a line that doesn't have very much NFL experience, and you don't want to take a quarterback that you're paying nearly a million dollars a year to and set him up in that kind of a situation. Also, the Raiders probably t want to take a look at a Vince Evans. Remember, they have been looking for a quarterback actively over the past couple of years. So Los Angeles goes to work from their own 29-yard line. And Rob Harrison gets the call. And he is bumped out of bounds. Gary Spann and company making the defensive play at the 36-yard line. Gain of seven. Second down and three. And that an obvious uh, difference between regular NFL ball and what we've been seeing. There's no support on the corner. That has happened continually this afternoon. A cornerback or a defensive end has got to come up as we've got an injured player down on the field. We'll get a number for you in just a second as you look at Mark Wilson. Uh, but there has not been any support on the corner. That's a basic play that a defensive end, an outside linebacker, or a cornerback has got to make. We've not seen much of it this afternoon. And I think that's the key word, basic play, because that's what we've seen offensively and defensively. Timeout, and basically, back in a moment. Ball at their own 36-yard line. Los Angeles out in front of Kansas City, 21 to nothing. We're in the third quarter, and we're just into the third quarter, only about 15 seconds off of the game clock. And Evans is back to throw, and he airs one out deep. Has a man if he can get to it. Yes, and then out of bounds. David Williams, Tampa Bay last year, Chicago's number three draft choice in 1986 reception, 44 yards, and at least one fan celebrates, and Trent Bryant is the man that he beats. And that's the toughest catch in football for a receiver to make, directly over the head. Take a look at it. It's not to the right of his vision or to the left. Evans throws the rainbow up. I think this could have brought rain. It was so high. But take right over the center of his head. Difficult catch for a receiver to make. And he also had the presence of mind, David Williams, to keep two feet in bounds. There's a shot of it right over the top. That means the vision, your vision, is blocked by your own helmet. It's difficult to pick up the ball. At the 20-yard line of Kansas City, first down. I'll stay over on top of you if I go this way. And this is Craig Ellis just kind of weaving his way over the left side. Bruce Holmes leading the defense. Let's call it the 17 and mark it for three, so it'll be second down and seven. And uh, we expect now, even though we're early in the second half, for this tremendous heat to start taking its toll. Although an unofficial look at the thermometer. What does that mean, an unofficial look? <laughs> I can't believe I said that. <laughs> That's a replacement announcer who said that. So it's 95 degrees. <laughs> Oh, dear. There it is. There it is. Well, 98 degrees. Th that's now an official look. That's now an official look, yes. Once the camera goes, it becomes an official look. Second and seven. Isolating man. Oh, oh. oh. Carl Akins, who scored the touchdown, uh, the first touchdown of the ball game, and he made a great move. The pass was to the wrong side, and he still almost pulled it off. Carlton Thomas had the coverage on it. And he changed uh, positions twice to get it. Look, back to the right. Now, oh, no, it's to the left, and nearly caught it. 
and kept his feet in bounds. The problem there, once your elbows hit the ground, the ball is going to pop out if you don't have a clear-cut hold on the football. That's what happens here. Watch, his elbows will hit the ground. He has it, and then as soon as the elbows hit, pop, goes the weasel. And Carlton Thomas stays down, so we have an injury timeout. And that means, of course, that Vince Evans will come to the sidelines as they work on Thomas. And that's cramps. I, I mean, we can't yeah. say that uh, medical opinion, but it, that's what they do when somebody has cramps in both uh, both calves. They're working on uh, the inside, doing some massaging and trying to keep his toes straight and up. Uh, one of the uh, things that happen when you have such poor heat. And the heat is going to take its toll. There's no question about it. Continually. From now on. Is that what continually means? It's, uh, it's almost 100 degrees. We're going to come on camera for you. And this is just a message for the truck. We're not going to put our coats on. Why kid the audience? <laughs> it's at, not at 105. We wore them for the opening. And we'll move right in here. And by the time we get all set and ready with the smiles, they'll be back to play. It is warm. I mean, in a word, it is really warm. Yeah, that reminds me of, you know, Miami in the middle of August yeah. training camps. And uh, for the players on the field this afternoon, they couldn't have picked a worse time to come out and to play their first NFL game of the season. Yes, but it is their first game and uh, for the replacement team. And now let's see what happens as uh, once again the Raiders try and put seven more on the scoreboard. An interesting thought when the players were introduced before the game, yes. uh, there were so few fans in the stands. I heard distinctly one fan say as a, a player was introduced, who? <laughs> <laughs> Evans throws along the sideline and it is incomplete. The receiver was out of bounds. Ted Nelson had the coverage. Craig Ellis is the man that he was going to. And uh, in the world of baseball, it is Detroit, the division champions. And they will move into the league championship series to be seen on NBC. So the, the final team is in place. And uh, you've been following the baseball scene. Did, did Toronto fold? Oh, they lost their last seven in a row. I mean, I, they were three and a half games up a week ago. No way they could lose that division, but they lost seven straight. Detroit comes on strong and uh, swept them at home. That's the only way they could have won the division within the regular season. They did it. And now a 35-yard field goal attempt by David Hardy. Mark Wilson to hold. And it is no good just outside of the upright from 35 yards away. We've got a timeout. The score remains 21-0 Raiders. This game is the property of the National Football League, Los Angeles Raiders, and Kansas City Chiefs, all rights reserved. Vince Evans and many of the players here today are saying, well, the reason we came back and trying to play because we have the dream to play in the NFL. Well, normally a, a player who's out of the league thinks of one thing, how he could have done it better. Vince Evans is doing it quite well this afternoon. Steven Pass is incomplete. It'll be second down and 10, but for Vince Evans, although he has played well, he's scored a touchdown. He's thrown a touchdown pass. Well, there's it may be a, a three-hour dream. Yeah, that's it. He's in the middle of a three-hour dream. It, it may go longer. He's had a nice afternoon. People may say, hey, look, uh, Vince, come on, and we'll give you a try for our football team. But if not, you're right, Charlie. He had a three-hour long, very nice afternoon in the sun in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Second down and 10 for Matt Stevens. It's been an even longer afternoon. He gives to Robert Parker. Parker goes to the 28-yard line, so it's going to be third down and still a couple. Demise Williams out of Oklahoma State, a rookie. Makes a tackle for the Los Angeles Raiders. Check of the clock. We're moving on 13 minutes. That is the time remaining here in the third quarter. And a check of the giant thermometer. Unofficial check, of course. Unofficial check. About 97 degrees. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that, isn't that a great song? A great statement? An unofficial check. Got to remember that. Robert Parker gets the call. Parker, rookie free agent. He was in training camp for the Chiefs, played his collegiate Robert ball at Parker BYU, and Mike Noble, who recovered a fumble early in the ball, in the first fumble of the game. There to make the tackle, and the kicking team comes in, led by That's Kelly Goodburn, who has looked pretty good. Frank Gans is a motivator. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall listening to his speech oh, yes. during halftime. Great speaker. He talked, oh, he really is. Of course, a former uh, fighter pilot. He talks about uh, uh, oh, the universe and, and the great struggle and whether it's a football game or something else, the desire and the will to win is so important. Great speaker. Oh, super punt. Lance Harkey will field it back at the 21-yard line. Slips one tackle. Makes a couple of moves at the 25. And he returns to the 29. So a 48-yard kick. Ted Nelson makes the tackle. An eight-yard return. And we've got a timeout. And the Raiders have the lead. Back in a moment. 
Everyone's mind, but uh, at least in four cities and possibly in 50 states. Baseball is on the minds of a lot of people. The tradition begins Tuesday as the National League throws the first pitch in this year's league championship series. The San Francisco Giants, as you know, making their first playoff appearance since 1971. They'll be taking on the St. Louis Cardinals, winners of the Eastern Division, and more after this play. Craig Ellis, the ball carrier to the 33. He has four. It'll be second down and six. Our baseball coverage begins Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time with Major League Baseball and Inside Look. The tradition is here. The memories are waiting on Tuesday. And the 1970 Minnesota Twins. That was the last time they won their division. That's right. In fact, they won back to back. Later. Yeah, they won back to back in 69 70. Hadn't been back since. Why, why don't you do that? <laughs> what, what, am I, what am I reading? What, you're doing that from memory, and I'm reading. Well, you know, I'm a baseball. I know you're a baseball fan, yeah. John. I just, it's my first love is baseball, ironically. And uh, you High and outside, low and away. <laughs> it's right. a walk, yes. Uh, 17 flag later, down, the, yeah. the flag, get a flag on the play. The Twins, of course, will take out now the Detroit Tigers in game one of the American League Championship Series. You can see that Wednesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time here on NBC. It all begins once again with Major League Baseball and inside look. Mark Albert will be there for that, and it'll be all on NBC Sports. Holding penalty against the Raiders, takes the ball back to the 19. Evans, this is a screen. He sets it up and sets it up again deep. That's the giveaway. And Rob Harrison on the receiving end. And he battles his way out across the 30 to the 34-yard line. That takes some work. Set up a screen is not, that's one of the most difficult plays in football to set up. Uh, First of all, you've got to convince a quarterback that he's got to give the good fake. You've got to convince a halfback that he's got to set up and not duck out too quickly. You've got to convince an entire offensive line to show pass and then break out into the flat and not get anybody downfield. Hey, that's a real achievement on the part of the L.A. Raider coaching staff. Is that hard? I wouldn't call it. Jeff Faulkner and Jack Epps make the tackle, a gain of 15. Just couldn't resist that. Second down and five. 34-yard line. Raiders leading 21 to nothing. And Rob Harrison, the ball carrier. Giving three to the 37. So it's going to be third down and a couple. Jeff Faulkner again on the tackle. And speaking of uh, Major League Baseball and inside, look, you'll be hosting one of the uh, pregame shows, primetime, next Saturday. Right, next Saturday night at Candlestick. Yeah. I believe it's game four between the uh, Giants and the St. Louis Cardinals. So. And you're looking, for, you're really looking forward to that. Right now. Yeah, we've been yeah. talking about it last night. Today. Well, I grew up with as a Willie Mays fanatic, and so Candlestick Park is the place to be if you were a Willie yes. Mays fan. Or the Polo Ground, but you're not. You don't remember the Polo Ground. Or Seal <laughs> Stadium. How about young you are. <laughs> How about Seal Stadium. Look at that. There's a. There's a. Third down and two. Or the Dodgers, of course, played here in the Coliseum when they first came west. The high fence at left field. And the moon shot from Wally Moon. Just a little baseball knowledge. Just don't let it slide by. And that's another interesting thought about this Coliseum. This past week when the real earthquake <laughs> yes. hit Back on to Thursday. We have one more earthquake story. One, one last one, I promise. I punched up a computer and saw a story that read, oh, the 64-year-old uh, Los Angeles Coliseum survived another earthquake. <laughs> the only problem was there were some cracks in the press box. And we're looking for those right now. <laughs> yes, there's there's one back in that corner and one over there. Yes. <laughs> All right, Vince Camach will be kicking to Kevin Wyatt. Nine minutes and 46 seconds. That is the time remaining here in the third quarter. Pressure, and he still gets a good kick away. Wyatt takes it at the 16, slips the tackle. Now he's, he's in got trouble. Some. He's got some. Could not quite get around the corner. Just a step away. And a flag drop back at the 39-yard line. It's a 47-yard kick with a three-yard return. Demise Williams makes the tackle, but there was a flag back at the 39-yard line, which usually means that one of the interior linemen Released too soon, you know. Only the two outside men can go. Everybody else has to wait till the kick. The outside men can go with the snap. We've got two flags, Charlie. There's also one down near the return, wait, which watch you watch been drive. He talks to everybody. There. There's an elder man to down field on a kicking <laughs> team. There's an illegal block on a receiving team. We're gonna play it over. <laughs> Isn't it great? And that's the way he talks all the time. You see him play. Hi, man. Well, here's what we got. And you're gonna make that flight. <laughs> oh, he's great. If you can pick a highlight this afternoon outside of Vince Evans, of course, it's been the punny. Yes. Vince Camacho has punted very yes. well, and Kelly uh, Goodburn has punted yes. very well. Both men will, again, one of those instances where both men will get a look, depending on how long this kind of a 
the strike last and the substitute plays are on the field. Do you have any thoughts, any feelings? <laughs> about, I mean, about what? About if, the strike? If and when it might, I know you have a feeling of the strike, if and when a solution might come about. Well, How Bob, is that for di diplomatic? Bob Trumpy and I were having lunch just the other day. Oh, no, you don't have lunch. <laughs> Only if he bought would you have lunch with him. But go ahead. No, I do have a couple of a couple of items. Uh, you know, there's been so much talk about the players going back in this week with or without a contract. And it's blocked. Blocked. And Kansas City could score. Yes. And it is a special team that does it. It is Bob Harris who earlier recovered a fumble, and it seems only natural for head coach Frank Gans that in this ball game, the special teams score their first touchdown. And just as we said, one of the highlights of the game huh. was the punting of, of Vince Camacho and Kelly Goodburn. Sure enough, it is blocked, takes it right off the foot, watch it, a good angle, and it bounces right yeah. back into his arms. I mean, that is a, that's a real dream for a defensive uh, end or alignment to pick it up on the first bounce, go into the end zone. Nice block coming across down the side by number 45, James Hamrick. Oh, I'm sorry, that's uh, <laughs> kicking is number four. Hamrick James kicking, Hamrick. yes, and it was Bob Harris blocking it. Picking it up and scoring the touchdown, and it's 21-7. The margin is 14 points. High, but still doable, and Bob Harris, just a great individual effort. Yeah, watch the block at the end. Now, it's really a nice block by Trent Bryant, number 45, yes. although you don't make that block at the goal line, guys. <laughs> I mean, he's going to the end zone. If you happen to have a turn of the defender uh, and you block him in the back, somebody's going to turn around and shoot you for taking that touchdown away. That's right. So don't he, make the block. That's right, because if the defender turns and the official just sees the end of the play, and then they get the call. Ten-minute ticker, Miami. Seattle tied 10 10. Halftime Dallas comfortably in front of the Jets by 14. Houston leading Denver by 7, and Green Bay out in front of Minnesota 20 to 7. And here the margin is 14 as Kansas City has just scored, and it's 21 to 7 Los Angeles as Hamrick is kicking off with Calhoun and Harkey to return man. And the six yard line here is Rick Calhoun. The block set up on the far side, flag is down. As he fights his way to the 34, 35 yard line. They're going to blow the play dead at the 34, but there was a flag drop back at the 20. And so they'll end up bringing it back on a holding call against Los Angeles. It's going to be against number 23, Ethan Horton, who collared a uh, member of the Kansas City Chiefs. He was trying to go up and make a block. But still, we made this point in the first half. Uh, overall, not that many flags. I thought that, you know, like we said earlier, I thought that there would be more. And for the record, Jimmy is agreeing with a nod of the head. Yes. I, did, I was trying to watch to see what exactly what Ethan Horton was going to say. See the helmet of Ethan Horton yes. in the back? Now, these helmets came out here. They were very clean and very polished. You can tell somebody who's a running back who's been in that contest, that is a hit by a red Kansas City helmet. And uh, the longer a season goes along, you'll find out running backs and offensive guards will have the colors of every team in the NFL across their heads. It's kind of like a, a badge of merit, maybe a, a you don't want it, You don't want it painted over. Or I never up. had one... <laughs> scratch on my helmet and your helmet was white <laughs> that's right i was smarter than uh, the average football did I you go did you go out and knock it against the wall so it just kind of looked beat up no, i was proud it was clean <laughs> you know receivers shouldn't get hit anyway <laughs> los angeles from their own 10 yard line first down 9 13 left to go in the third greg ellis ellis outside the 20 to the 25 yard line so he has 15 yards on the play tony holloway and Trent Bryant make the tackle, and it's a first down for the Raiders. There again, there's the lack of, uh, uh, yeah, I'll say it in a second. Try. What is it? What is no it? Lack of, <laughs> lack of uh, coordination? <laughs> With my tongue, yeah. yes. No, there was there absolutely nothing on the corner. The defensive end didn't have containment. The outside linebacker didn't have containment. The wide receiver was running defensive back off downfield. Again, one of the items that you point to and say, this is a problem, this is a young team, an inexperienced club. One of the prime forces of defense is containment. First down at the 25-yard line. Yes, 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 yes. Rob Harrison. And he leans almost to the 30. Jeff Faulkner again there defensively. James Black is also there. And Randy Frazier was there. Was spotted at the 29-yard line. When they look at films on uh, tomorrow or whenever they do, the Raiders Raider team, uh, as we have an injured player. Tony Holloway. Number 97 for the Chiefs. And that, uh, just to, just for a moment before you get back to your film story, 
there was there was a thought that we might have more than the usual amount of injuries throughout uh, the league today for these players, but at least here we've had a couple or some cramps, but uh, but not anything uh, more than normal. No, and that's a, that's a major concern because uh, their protection, as far as the, their their contracts are concerned, one of the reasons there is a strike is is how much protection these players have. It's got to be a question of the, the men in here playing today. Second down and six. Evans going deep. And a flag is going to go down. Greg Lathan, the intended receiver. Kevin Wyatt had the coverage. And as he comes back and we set up the replay, this reminder that this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. Intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast of the express written consent of the Los Angeles Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. All right, watch the interference. No question about this. You see just the tail end of it, but it was number 23. Kevin White had wrapped up Great Lath Greg Latham, number 81, five or six yards before the ball had even arrived. Would have been a big play because Latham had him beat for a step. And so it'll go as a defensive holding penalty. The ball comes to the 34-yard line, and it carries the automatic first down. First down Raiders at their own 34, out in front 21 to 7, with just over seven minutes. In fact, 7.37, and the clock is flying. Time remaining, third quarter. And here is Craig Ellis. Ellis, who has scored a touchdown along with Vince Evans and Carl Aikens for the Raiders, stopped by John Walker. John Walker makes the stop for the Chiefs. As we started to touch on earlier in the game, Charlie, for coaching staffs trying to put an offensive system in or a defensive system, the basics are important. Can you get the ball up to the quarterback, a regular snap? Uh, what about a cadence system? Do we do it on one or two, and what kind of a cadence do we have? Are our numbering systems to the right, even numbers, or to the left, odd numbers? The very basics. That's why you're not seeing very many complicated plays this afternoon. Second and five. Evans keeps both backs in the block, throws, and it is incomplete. And for the second time, he throws behind. This time, Jim Brown, the intended receiver, when he was looking over the right shoulder, has to turn and come back over the left. And that, that really makes it tough. You know that as a receiver. You, yeah. just, you lose the ball, and you, you're you playing a guessing game as a receiver. He's got a strong arm. He actually threw it before Wade Lockett, number 87, was ready for it. But he's got to make that catch. I mean, that's a catch an F NFL receiver makes. It's a little behind him, but uh, Vince Evans might have put a little bit too much on the ball. You're right. It's a little behind, but that's a catch that Wade Lockett, number 87, should make. Third down and five. And from the shotgun. Sean Regent is the center. High kind of snap, and those snaps in the shotgun have been a little shaky. And here's Evans for the first down to the 50. Gets back to the 40. And goes to the 37-yard line. 24 yards for Vince Evans. And this time, he did not go sliding at Trent Bryant, who made the tackle. So perhaps Vince Evans has decided, even in his own mind, and it's a three-hour dream, and let's enjoy it to the utmost. Well, in the dream, he scores a touchdown on a 75-yard run, and that's what he was working on here because he had number th 83, Carl Aikens, open down the field wide open. He high starts to high-step it, and this is when the dream gets in the way of reality. I might as well slide to the ground. He should have. However, he takes the hit instead. Nice run by Vince Evans. I, I, I had those same dreams. Those same dreams. Yeah, but you woke up. <laughs> yeah, but with an earthquake. That was from last night. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I never did score the long touchdown. And now we'll have a timeout. The Raiders take it. That is their first timeout of the second half. They'll have two remaining. 5.57 left on the clock. We're in the third quarter. And Los Angeles is in front of Kansas City by a score of 21 to 7. Get in and win that, uh, that uh, championship. And of course, the league champion cheers on NBC. And speaking of Joe Garagiola, of course, he'll be covering with uh, Vince Scully. They'll be in the National League City, I believe. Yes, and Bob Costas and Tony Kubek, an outstanding duo, and they will be working in the American League City. Marv Albert and Jimmy Cephalo will be doing the pregame show, and uh, I'll be watching. I'll be watching all the way and enjoying it. Yes. An injury report on Tony Holloway, and we do not have a report on his injury, just that he will not return. 10-minute ticker, Houston in front of Denver and Green Bay in front of Minnesota. Evans back has pressure. Scrambles away. Throws has a man. It's there. Could score. And he does. 
Evans with the scramble throws his second touchdown pass. This one to Ethan Horton from 32 yards away. But hold it a minute. There's two flags down. The flags are down in the end zone. And they're down because Ethan Horton uh, spiked the football in the face of a defender. Not a very classy move. Of course, the rule is in place. It, uh, we call it the Mark Gaston rule with the sack dance, but it's the same effect. Vince Evans, though, had a couple of receivers he could have gone to. That dream keeps getting better and better. Yes, it does. Us. Yes, it does. Unsportsmanlike conduct after the touchdown on number 23, 15 yards on the kickoff. And I got to tell you, he doesn't care at all. And nor does Vince Evans. <laughs> Evans, 205 yards on just seven completions. They've been bombs, haven't they? Yes. Evans to Horton from 32 yards out. And that's a 90-yard drive in seven plays. 90 yards in seven plays. And the extra point is up, and it is good. And the Raiders are now leading Kansas City 28 to 7 as Mark Wilson holding. David Hardy spits the uprights. And Los Angeles back in front by 21 points with 5.06. The time remaining, we're in the third quarter here in Los Angeles. And thus far, the Raiders offensively 28 points. They have not allowed a Kansas City offensive touchdown. Kansas City's touchdown by Bob Harris blocking a punt, picking it up, and going in from 23 yards away. Here's another look at the touchdown. Watch the, the decision that Evans has. He's got a couple of receivers downfield. Again, that great scrambling ability. My goodness. Yes. But here comes the, the flag right at the end. Horton beats the defender down the sideline. Now watch this. He, <laughs> yes, but shot. there's a reason. Can we run it on? I don't know if we have any more, but there is a, maybe we can see it here. There is a reason for this. There is a reason. You know, one of those great feelings in life. When you Horton was the number one draft choice by Kansas City. Right. He was cut loose, and now... It's kind of in your face, and he enjoys it. Yes. Well, I, I got to tell Jack Epps, number 25, that he's running over, uh, and I know he enjoys it. No, it's just a, it's a, it's a moment in it, time. It is. It's a moment, and it's a part right of a dream. Right. I kind of like it. No, I hate to tell you that, but I kind of like it. I'm not, I'm not all that enthusiastic about that rule of the end zone. Really? As long as it's not so choreographed. Well, Joe, I don't like it when it's choreographed and seven or eight people do the whole, you know. Joe Paterno had a saying. He used to say, don't spike the football in the end zone. You're supposed to get there. Act like you know what to do with it once you get into that's it. That's a good point. No, that's a good point. I only spiked it once. And it was, only, you were only there once. You know. <laughs> hey, what's that no big deal? And then you know what I told Joe when he got mad at me? I said, you, you haven't been in end zone in 40 years. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Charlie, what did hey, there's <laughs> a, there's the announcers. <laughs> <laughs> it takes all kinds. You know, that said masqueraders. Yes, That's what the masqueraders. Uh, the, the David Hardy kicking off. Kevin Wyatt is the deep back. Of course, you see he's kicking off from the 20 yard. That's all due to that spike in the end zone. And Wyatt on the return. Out to the 40 and then across the 40. Pretty good return to the 47 yard line. And Lockett makes the tackle for the Raiders. Tackles made by Wade Lockett and Leonard Jackson. We were talking about the possibilities of the strike ending this week, Charlie. Rumors have abounded that the NFLPA might send the players across with or without a contract as we take a look at Stevens. The Matt Stevens is 4-10 on the afternoon. If the clubs, if the if the uh, players would decide to cross the picket lines this week, come in in mass without a contract, play the remainder of the year without one, what happens when the draft comes around next season? That's a collectively bargained item. One of the many questions that is starting to surround the possibility of the players coming in this week. First down at the 47 yard line. Flags are down. Throw over the middle is dropped. And that is a catchable pass. And that is David Montoya. Montoya. David Montoya from Oregon State. And I believe that's the first pass he's had thrown in his direction. I believe so, Charlie. He was in all of No, it's not. No? It's the first time I've mentioned it, though. Oh, I see. Because I'm working on that name for several days. Defense offside. Defense offside. Lined up in the neutral zone. That's a five-yard penalty. It's first down. Stevens under a lot of pressure. A blitz by the strong safety that time. That's why the man-to-man -man coverage downfield. You're absolutely right. He short arm the uh, uh, the ball Montagna did. It's uh, called alligator arms. He thought he was going to get a hit getting across the middle. Alligator arms? Yeah, you know, those short little arms coming across. The, don't, <laughs> don't hit me, please, oh, Mr. Safety. Yes. If I get close, and I'll snap <laughs> you with my mouth. <laughs> we have wandered far afield today. Here's Robert Parker. 
to the 43 yard line and that'll be close to the first down. Charlie, your thoughts about Jim Ellis. What happens this week if uh, if the players do go in or, or decide to go in without a contract? You got four and a half minutes to go in the third. Let me just make that notation. Uh, I have a question rather than I don't have any answer, but I have a question. What happens if the players association just disband decertifies yeah. yeah they decertify that's one of the questions and now it throws everything about. really ah! wide open Demise Williams bringing down the receiver and that is Kenny Nash Kenny Nash has looked pretty good this afternoon. Yes, he, he made a couple of moves early on in the contest that I uh, thought were pretty fine. Another nice move on the part of Nash to get open. Stevens, uh, again, he's uh, he knows the system of, of the Kansas City Chiefs, but he has not had much opportunity. He has not had much time to sit in back in the pocket and try to throw the football. After Los Angeles 34, second down and two. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm thinking here, along with the game, I'm not trying to to dodge an issue, trying to go to the top and pick up the first down, and the Raiders' defense is going to push the ball carrier back. Third and one, you can look for the Raiders down by this many points to, of course, go for the first down uh, on third and fourth down. Chris Smith getting the call, and so it's going to be third down and one at the 33-yard line. I think if I consider myself more as a fan, uh, I think... You know, the reality is I'd like it to get over with. I'd like us to get regardless, back. Regardless, yeah, I'd yeah. like it to get back. And I'd like it to be worked out and worked out so that it's so that it's fair to both sides. And if it's not fair to both sides, please, the problem please. is, Charlie, is we go, we're going for the first down. Looks like you'll pick it up on the side. Robert Parker. You know, it has to be a win-win. It has to be. Management has to win, and the players have to win. That's the only way that it can. Uh, and I think it should be for more than three years. I don't want to. I don't think that we ought to face a strike possibility every three years. I think they should set up something for six years and put in it some percentages for uh, the, you know, to include whatever happened to the new television contracts in three years and set it up for a six-year period. Well, the problem, of course, is that if uh, there is not a win-win situation, if the players lose completely, there'll be another strike in three years. Yes. So we simply put a Band-Aid over the problem. Yes. It's got to be equitable for both sides. Yes. And Stevens rolls, throws, has a man wide open, and he hits him, and that's Montagna. And once he starts throwing to him, he comes back to him. He picks up 16 yards as they move to the 15-yard line. And it is a first down. Jim Ellis with a tackle. Interesting. There is one veteran on that Kansas City offense that's uh, helped tie things together for Carl Mock in the offense. That's number 62, Jim Peterzak, who, who was drafted by the New York Giants back in 1974. As we take a look at the 10-minute ticker, the finals from the earlier games this afternoon. Yes, Peterzak, as a matter of fact, has played in 125 NFL games. That's probably more than the total. <laughs> of both ball clubs plus a couple of other games today. Four yard line, and it's going to be first down and goal to go. Rod Jones, the tight end, pulling it in, and Jim Ellis again making the tackle at the four as again we check the scores of the early games. Those, of course, all being finals. Big win for Indianapolis. And Tampa Bay over Detroit by four. Third quarter, Miami and Seattle tied 10-10. It'd be, oh, what if you go into overtime today? And uh, Houston leading Denver and Green Bay over Minnesota. But these games do count in the standing. A play action fake by Stevens. Throws, has his man, and he's into the end zone. And that is Rod Jones, who scores from four yards out. And so Kansas City continues to try and battle back in the ballgame. 53 yards in eight plays. Four yards on the touchdown pass from Stevens to Jones. And here is the extra point attempt by Hamrick. And it is up and it is good. And so the score, the Los Angeles Raiders 28 and the Kansas City Chiefs 14. Now with just 59 seconds left to go in the third. He's been spelling time with Stein Ross uh, this afternoon. And now we've talked about it in the first half. We talked about it at the beginning of this period. The heat has to take its toll. No question about it. Does it, is it, does it take its toll more offensively or defensively? Oh, I don't think there's much of a difference. I, does it take its toll dark jerseys, light jerseys? Oh, that, that's a big difference. Uh, I'll give you an example. Don Shula always forced 
the opposing team to wear dark jerseys. Normally, uh, the home team will wear dark jerseys, but uh, Don Shula always forced the opponent to wear dark jerseys in the heat of the afternoon in the Orange Bowl. Now, of course, Joe Robbie Stadium. Uh, but uh, it does have a, a large difference. Here, Al Davis... Uh, the guess, Raiders prefer to play in yeah, black and they, all. They like, yeah. Well, they like the black jerseys all over. Yeah. They, they, uh, they think they're, uh, they're their lucky jersey. Kansas City moves the ball 53 yards in seven plays for the touchdown. 28 to 14. The Raiders leading the Chiefs. As we wind down the clock in the third period, we do not have an official attendance. If I can give you an unofficial attendance. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. No. There are, there are not a lot of folks on hand on this warm, sunny afternoon in Southern California. At the eight-yard line on the return, this is Rick Calhoun. Calhoun out to the 30, the 35, and down at the 36-yard line where Ted Nelson makes the tackle. The weight loss on an afternoon like this can be amazing for a player of my size. I weighed 190 when I played, as you take a look. Evans at over 200 yards of passing already. On yeah, that's the 29 yards per completion that he's averaging. And a lot of that due to his scrambling ability. He's gotten out of a lot of trouble. He certainly has. Uh, but getting back to the, the heat problem this afternoon, the player, maybe 190, might lose four or five pounds this afternoon. I have done that uh, playing in the Orange Bowl, that kind of heat. Can you imagine what a player, maybe 250 pounds out there, one of the larger men, might lose a dozen pounds in the heat here in the, the Coliseum this afternoon? The, the unofficial look at the thermometer yeah. about 90 degrees, <laughs> but it's much warmer than that out there. Raiders from their own 36-yard line. Evans back as pressure throws as he is hit and is going to be incomplete. And he was really racked up. Perry, the intended receiver. And Mario Perry was wide open. If uh, Vince Evans is not uh, clocked on that play, we've got a touchdown going for uh, oh, some 64 yards. Take a look at it. He takes a real shot. He's got Mario Perry, number 84, wide open. One of the few times that Vince Evans has allowed somebody to get to him. Oh, Ted boy, Nelson. Shot. Ted Nelson yes. coming from his strong safety Come position. On, Greg, see him, buddy. Let's go. And now the, the Kansas City Chief defense starting to take some gambles. That's a gamble. They, they, they won that time because somebody was so wide open there was a problem of breakdown in the coverage of the secondary. They gambled by sending the strong safety. And now Evans doesn't like it because they're changing up defensively on him, so he calls the timeout. Second timeout that Los Angeles has taken here in the second half. They have one remaining. We have 42 seconds left here at the end of the third quarter. Again, something that, uh, not to belabor a point, but something to, uh, to talk about the assessment of the level of play that you've seen here. And also, you had a chance to, uh, to look at one of the other ball games on CBS back before we left the hotel this morning. Well, I, I, in both instances, I think the level of play is several notches below what we're used to seeing in the NFL on a given Sunday. Uh, a lot of uh, mistakes in, in, in just the normal priorities a player would go through, as I said, containment on defense. Time and time again, the Raiders were caving in the Kansas City Chiefs. That's something that you will not see on an afternoon in the NFL, not continually, when a, a linebacker and a defensive man and a cornerback refuse to contain. A lot of poor decisions on the part of running backs, missing holes, uh, this blocks in the part of, uh, of offensive linemen. Right, now you were you were a receiver. Yes. What have you noticed as far as the, the play of the receiver? Well, I, I think Akins, for example, the receiver for the Raiders, uh, played very well this afternoon. Nash, the receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs, has got some ability, played quite well. I noticed in some instances where they did not come back to the football, a receiver will not, and that's a basic mistake. Some things that uh, after a couple of years of experience, you, you become uh, more accustomed to doing. But there were some positive plays. Let's not say yeah. this. Is, there were some positive plays made by some players today. But overall, the play can be characterized as, as being sloppy. Well, and again, we, we use one level. Let's try, a, let's try another level of 1 to 10. Let's say a Super Bowl is 10, and the second half of the first preseason game is 1. Now, where would you put the level of play of what we've seen today? Maybe at a 2. I don't think it's very far really? off. Of the, that, that, the, that far down? I think so. I yeah. think this is a, a first, uh, first half of the preseason football game. That's, that's what it seems to be to me. All right. The pass is complete to the 44-yard line as he goes to Rod Wheeler. And that is a big league catch. That's a tough catch. Uh, arms extended over the head while a defender is bearing down and actually making contact. Yet Wheeler, a strong tight end, played uh, with Cleveland, the Oakland Invaders, the Outlaws, Calgary Stampeders this year. Nice catch. And... Uh, Hangs on to the football. And we have been remiss under everything that's been going on. Our director is Bob Levy, who has just flown back from Seoul, Korea, where he was there earlier in the week, had to go back to New York for meetings, and he flew out here. So 
His uh, his body is here. His time is a, his is uh, he's about. 35,000 feet above Hawaii right now. Kenny Edmondson did a great job, a great job yesterday doing the baseball game in Detroit. Arrived late last night in time for the earthquake. And so under dire circumstances, the troopers that they are, are certainly coming through in the truck. Craig Ellis on the receiving end. A little play action pass on the part of uh, Vince Evans that time. Worked well on short yardage situation. Faked the ball actually, I believe, to Ellis out of the backfield, then went right back to him with the short pass. Gain of 14 to the Kansas City 41 yard line. First down, it's the Raiders 28, the Chiefs 14. With 31 seconds now left to go. In the third quarter. Nice play action fake. Good blocking by the offensive line, and David Williams has the reception at the 22-yard line, a gain of 20. Mark at the 21-yard line, a gain of 20, and the first down. Credit the, for the Raiders' offensive line. Totola Black, Regent Wilkerson, and Wright, and they are giving good protection. Not great protection, but good protection. Maybe a four or five on a scale of 10. Yeah, they did a good job. The Raiders also that time kept everybody in. They just sent two receivers into the pattern, and the Chiefs were in the zone, yet they were not able to stop the two-man pattern. Meanwhile, the third quarter comes to a close. Raiders lead by 14, and we'll be back with the fourth quarter after these messages from your local station. Your side, as does the score. Total offense, 418 yards to 173, and it's 28-14. Los Angeles in front, and they have the ball to the Kansas City 21-yard line. And Craig Ellis. Ellis breaks to the outside, the 15, the 10, and he goes out at uh, just outside the eight yard line where we first down and goal to go and Jack Epps was in hot pursuit. The ticket information count as it has been uh, presented to us. Tickets used, that means people here in the stands, 10,708. 10,708 and uh, it really doesn't look that, but this is a configuration of uh, almost 100,000. And so uh, when you spread it out, uh, 10,000 looks like about 6,000. Tickets issued, 26,000. No shows, 15,757. But on hand, 10,708. Evans back to throw. Pass it almost. Oh, 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 intercepted and. Carlton Thomas had 94 yards of long green grass. A lot of real estate in front of him. Couldn't pull it in. Perry, the intended receiver, will be second down and goal to go. Look at this almost touchdown. Yeah, first mistake Vince Ma Evans made all day long. Uh, when you're going to throw into the fat like this, you've got to make sure you've got somebody, especially, as you say, Charlie, when there's 96 yards mm -hmm. heading the other direction. Ten-minute ticker. These are games that parallel with ours. Miami now 13 to 10. They have a field goal. They've broken that tie. Dallas stretches the margin. Houston in front of Denver, and Green Bay continues to lead Minnesota. They've stayed on that 20 to 7 score for quite a while. And here it is the Raiders 28, Kansas City 14, 14 49. That is the time remaining in the ballgame. Ellis, who makes a good move, cuts back inside. Now, here is a man with four years of the Canadian Football League, nine games with Miami last year, and that's the kind of move that we haven't seen that much of today. No, we haven't whatsoever. That's the best run of the afternoon. You're right, Jordan. He played with Edmonton and uh, the Rough Riders with uh, Winnipeg. He was in the 49er camp in 82 with the Dolphins last year. I mean, this man has been all over the place, and Greg Ellis has certainly shown that he wants to be a professional football player. That kind of run will, will make him one. That's a fine run. He has 12 carries for 70 yards and has just scored his second touchdown. Wilson to hold and Hardy to attempt the extra point. Good snap. And it is good, but uh, two flags are down. And so we've got to check that out first. The kick is good. <coughs> Defense has 12 men on the field, hmm. five yards on a kickoff. Timeout. But you expected 12 men on the field on a day like this. We've got a timeout. Back in a moment. <laughs> oh, Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> This is Charlie Jones along with Jimmy Cepelo. The Raiders on top of the Chiefs, 35-14.
as David Hardy will be kicking off to Kevin White. Charlie, and talking to some of the players who were outside of the stadium earlier today out there with the picket signs, some of the questions being tossed about that really, I guess the legal minds have to sit down and decide is what does happen to the players go in without a contract? What happens to the draft uh, next year without an agreement? What happens to free agency? Uh, a lot of questions being asked by players on both sides, inside and outside. And also, uh, We've received a call. Who from? The players management side? Is that no, no, the management council. Saying, the management. saying that there would be a draft whether there was an agreement or not reached. Now, I, I, so I, there doesn't I have not heard that before. There doesn't have to be, according to the phone call that we received in the production truck that was relayed to us, that, that our information was wrong. That Because I thought that if there's not a signed agreement, that the draft, uh, the draft was courtesy of an agreement by the union and that there has to be a union for the draft to fall in place. Apparently... From uh, the phone call that we received, that is not necessarily true. Notice how I cloaked that in legalese. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to slide by both sides of the question. But, Charlie, as you are an attorney, <laughs> I think that question will be left to a lot of the legal oh, yes. minds in the next oh, yeah. several months if, yeah. if indeed, this, hmm. this is ended, if the players go out without an agreement. That you know what I'm sick of? I'm, I'm, sick. I'm tired of all this discussion about if this happens or yeah, that. Why don't we just too. work it out, settle it, and let's go play NFL football? Right. Let, let us know. We can come back as we take a look yeah. at the replay of the touchdown. Well, watch Ellis now. This is... Hey, this is an NFL run right here. He makes the decision to come. See, he made the wrong decision originally because he followed his blocking poorly, but it opened up for him. Had enough presence of mind to get into the end zone. I wholeheartedly agree, Charlie. The questions are mind-boggling, and yeah. I really don't think either side understands. There's the decision. It opened up back for him inside. He sneaks into the end zone. I really don't think anybody knows all the answers, and they're just going to have to tell us when the NFL football normally will continue mm -hmm. and we'll be there and we'll enjoy it. Number of plays, eight total yards on the drive, 64. Ellis from eight yards out, took a minute 15. Go, go away. And if it's not settled next week, and uh, if NBC does decide to uh, to televise, then uh, we also will be there. Eric Brown on the receiving end. Ah, uh, Charlie, we finally got an explanation to our question. Now, this is the explanation handed to me just as we speak. All right. The last collective bargaining agreement stays in effect until the new one is signed. Oh. So it's like rolling over. Okay. So that uh, that's called in perpetuity. Okay, I'm glad you're the lawyer because I'm certainly yeah. not. Yes. Yeah. And what it does, of course, the reason for that clause, and here's Stevens back to throw, and he goes complete and helmet to helmet. Stein Koss, the rookie out of Arizona State who was in training camp in Kansas City. That's the reason you have chin straps, folks. Eddie Anderson put the hit on it. Ooh, let's take another look. It, it actually, for it looks like a head rolls. Now yes. take a look at this. Yes. The helmet, that could be dangerous, though. That's the problem. Once that comes off, if he gets hit again, he has no protection on the head. 47-yard line of Los Angeles. 14 yards on the play. And the first down. Very fortunate that uh, Steinkos did not get hit once again. Quarterback draw. Up to the sideline, yes. He was trying to get out of bounds around the 35, and then as the free safety Eddie Anderson was closing down the angle on him, he decided to get out at the 41-yard line. So he picks up six, and it'll be second down and four. The reason that that clause, that's back to back that statement, the reason that that clause was put in and written in that particular form is so that you did not have this problem when you get into uh, a, a negotiating situation. So at least there is a form that continues on that everybody can work under until a new form has been decided upon. And so the players out here will be protected by the same yes. items of the collective bargaining exactly. act. Exactly, exactly. Because the collective bargaining act is in force. Robert Parker is carrying 31 yard line, gain of 10, and the first down. Well, then that answers some of the questions we had about injuries this afternoon. Yes. If a player is injured uh, under the old collective bargaining agreement, he receives his contract for this year and half of what he would have received next year as long as it does not exceed $65,000. And that is the end of his protection. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, good. We answered two questions this afternoon. Yes. Aren't you glad you all joined us? <laughs> By the way, the Raiders are leading the Chiefs 35 to 14, and Kansas City's got a little drive going. And a good read. He comes back and picks up a secondary receiver in a Stein Koss again. I think I've noticed, and I noticed this about both cornerbacks. When they find a receiver that makes a catch, they start coming back to him. Uh, they, well, they just develop the confidence in a receiver. And also, Stein Koss, you know what I like about that? He took the big hit, the helmet goes flying, and yet he comes right back and makes a big catch. I like that. That shows a lot of competitive nature. Stevens, though, you're right, makes the secondary read, which is very difficult under a very tough rush. 
Koss with the reception. Gain of 11 to the 20 and a first down. And the give this time is to Chris Smith. And Smith goes to the 12-yard line. He has eight, second down and two. An injury report on Chris Lindstrom, the defensive end for Kansas City. He has a bruised back and heat exhaustion, and he will not be returning. And it's going to be second down and a couple at the 12. We're moving on the 11-minute mark, time remaining, and the, the clock here now in the sun at the Coliseum still begins to hover around 97 or 98 degrees. Here's Robert Parker. Parker stood up by Daryl Bird at the 10-yard line. We'll give him a couple. And let's see where they spot it. And it may be close to the first down. You may notice that now the chains are on the outside of that uh, three-foot white stripe that surrounds the field. And, uh, or the six-foot white stripe that surrounds the field in all NFL games. And so we... Uh, this time, just the eye measurement is enough for Ben Dreith, and he has the first down. And don't forget NBC's coverage of the League Championship Series, National League and American League. It's going to be a lot of fun. Certainly, as National League begins on Tuesday night, it will be in St. Louis, the Giants and the Cardinals. And Wednesday night, it will be uh, Minnesota and the, Twi uh, the Tigers. I'm sorry. The flags are down as Matt Stevens goes sliding down at the 40-yard line. And what he's saying is, oh, no, he worked so hard to get here. Not a penalty. Oh. And he has uh, developed drives as we see the holding call. Twice, uh, twice. of course, uh, the fumbles by Lacey inside the five-yard line. Holding number 62. Ten-yard <coughs> yeah. penalty and a first down. So the ball will go back out to the 20, and it'll be first down and 20. And remember that Ken Lacey's two fumbles, one at the two-yard line, one at the one-yard line, if the Chiefs have been able to convert those as we check the other scores. We're going to be looking at a 35-28 game, and Kansas City would be driving here for the tie. So the two mistakes, the things that, uh, that Frank Gans, the head coach of Kansas City, said we cannot afford to do, they did, and they were very, very costly at that time. First down and 20. A little pump fake and in a scramble and a sack. And we have that the third sack for the Los Angeles Raiders. Kansas City has not registered a sack as yet. And this is Ron Brown, who now has two sacks plus a fumble recovery. So he has looked pretty good. Stevens decides to hang on at the last minute. Good decision. He had an idea to try to toss it into the flat at the very last minute. It could have been disastrous, though. 27 yard line, second down and 27. And look at the chains, it's, uh, it's about an inch shy of the goal line. So it's second and 27, but the reality is it's second down goal to go. Stevens throwing on the run. And the pass is pulled down by Robert Parker, and Parker then is immediately pulled down himself, and this time by Lance Harkey. Spotted at the 22, so he has five, and it's third down. Let's call it goal to go. And the clock showing eight minutes, 47 seconds, and counting time remaining here in the fourth quarter in the very warm Coliseum in Los Angeles before a crowd of 10,708. And the city has had a problem winning in the Coliseum. They've won only one time in their last six appearances here in the Coliseum. That includes the first Super Bowl against Green Bay and their first league game in the AFL against the then Los Angeles Chargers. Into the end zone and incomplete. Their only victory was against the Raiders here last year in this stadium. John Trahan, the intended receiver. And Tony Tillman had the coverage and it'll be fourth down. And that win, of course, uh, propelled the Chiefs into the playoffs. And they kept Los Angeles at home. When we talked to Frank Gans, the head coach of Kansas City, we said, at what level are you? I said, and he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, it's confusion. And he said, no, that's, uh, that's too high. We're just above chaos. It's a bad snap from 40 yards away. It is through the uprise. A 40-yard field goal by James Hamrick. And we'll be back in a moment. Good play. Oh, great play. Watch this. It's a bad snap, and he gets it down. He does not get the laces turned toward the goalpost, but it doesn't matter. It's a good placement and a very good kick on the part of James Hamrick, number four. 
And so it is 35-17, the Raiders over the Chiefs, and Kansas City will be kicking off. 40-yard field goal by Hammock, the first field goal, successful field goal of the game, as David Hardy missed from 35 yards out earlier for the Los Angeles Raiders. Lance Harkey and Rick Calhoun are the deep backs as Hamrick, who just picked up the three-pointer, will be kicking off eight minutes and 11 seconds. That is the time remaining here in the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Many people think that the Coliseum was built for the 32 Olympic Games. It was enlarged for the 32 Olympic Games. It was built in the 20s. Hang on, Charlie. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Widen out, I'll get back to the Coliseum story in a moment. Hot dog, here we go, the gun is up. <laughs> it's a false start. And now they start again, and now they stop. And now a flag is down, and the Raiders have the ball. But why not? I love it. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it, yeah. <laughs> now this is what football is all about. Don't you remember doing that when you were a kid? And you go over there, and when I and when I drop my hands, and then you do that, is and it, nobody understands. There's the old Bill Cosby album, Why Is There Air? And he says, <laughs> as you take another look at it, now this is the idea, okay? They're trying to do an onside kick. Yeah. The man to the right of the kicker is supposed to drop his arm, that allows the troops to start sprinting down the field and the kicker times it so that they have a running start when the ball is kicked. Yeah. However, uh, he's got to remember to kick the football before they get past the line of scrimmage. Well, they also got they also <laughs> he got to tell the kicker to kick when they're five yards away. There's that old the new rule now, Charlie. Of course, that the, they have the uh, option to take the football where it went out of bounds. Doesn't apply here. This was recovered by uh, by the Raiders. This oh, is an onside kick, and therefore it's an Correct. exception to it. Correct. Yeah, but it was just recovered here. Okay. On an onside kick, you can do one and have it go out of bounds. Right. The second the one, second you get one is where it, it goes there, and it's a new 30-yard rule. Yeah. Um, however, getting back to <laughs> Bill Cosby and Wise there are, he said, this is a, an old album, by the way, he said it's kind of <laughs> like uh, street lot football when you play. You tell your buddy, well, go down to the corner, yeah. take the Crosstown bus, have the driver open the doors at 42nd Street, <laughs> I'll fake it to you. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that's going on here this afternoon. Oh, yeah, but that's what makes it fun. If we can't enjoy this, we can't enjoy anything. Evans' pass is complete. Good move. And this is Rob Harrison. Harrison's still going. And he's been brought down by Bob Harris. And the flag is down. So that stops the clock with 7.18 left to go. <laughs> It's going to be a legal procedure against the Raiders. Illegal formation on the offense, five-yard penalty, and it's going to be second down. This is something we really expected to see more of because when you try and change uh, the strength of uh, of a formation, then somebody has to move up on the line, somebody else has to move back off, and what you, you do, you, you leave a tackle that's uncovered, does not have a man outside of him, you do not have seven men on the line of scrimmage. Those, those are the yeah, kind of exactly. basic things that happen. Yeah, and, and it's the simplest move an offense will make to try to strange, change the strength is move a tight end. It involves the movement of not only the tight end, but both wide receivers, and you see a lot of penalties in preseason that way, and then, of course, as we made the correlation between preseason and this game, that's why you see the penalty. Second down and 12. Harrison leaves the football. A flag is down. The ball is still being chased. There's markers on the field. Kansas City has the football if it holds up. It looked as if Randy Frazier is the man who recovered the fumble, but there was a marker back at the 46. Let's take another look. Let's find out where the fumble occurred. Holding on the offense. They're going to decline the penalty and take the football on a fumble, and it's first down. Stripped out by two yep. Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, Jack Epps uh, in there is one of them, and it's, it's Ted Nelson. It is Ted Nelson who recovers the fumble. Stay in there. Stay in there. So Kansas City takes over. Miami and Seattle are still separated by three points. Dallas continues uh, in front. In their game, Houston on top and Green Bay leading. The ball at the 33-yard line. Kansas City trailing 35 to 17 with 6:44 time remaining here in the Coliseum. The Raiders on top. Good pass and a good reception by Rod Jones between two defenders at the 41-yard line. And so Stevens throwing with a little bit more authority there as Ron Foster then makes the tackle. 
And Stevens has showed uh, some improvement over the second half. Uh, his first NFL action he's seen, he was with the Kansas City early on in the camp but did not throw any balls during their preseason games. And he has shown some improvement. 13 to 20 for 155 and a touchdown, no interceptions. Hey, that's not a bad afternoon. Second down and one, little play action fake. Sets, throws, and the pass is caught at the 49 yard line. It's going to go for a gain of seven. Eric Brown pulled it in. And what they do in that situation is they give a, the play at the point of the reception, which is the 49 and the first down. And almost everybody on uh, both teams has been into the ball game. And it, uh, for a lot of the coaching staffs, it's been a little bit of a madhouse this past week of players coming in and out. Some of the equipment managers had to put the names on Velcro for the back of the jerseys to make the fast exchange. Here's Robert Parker. And Parker is pulled down at the 44 yard line of Los Angeles. He has seven, it'll be second down and three. Clock continues to move, 5-18 and count. Parker limping just a bit as he comes out. Second down and three. And Ken Lacey comes in. Chris Smith and Ken Lacey are the two running backs. Steven Rolls throws and the pass is complete. And we're going to have a unsportsmanlike penalty. David Montagna on the receiving end. It was Ricky Williams who spun him out and way out of bounds. Did not let him go, and they'll tag that on to the end of the play. And Ricky, of course, will say, Me? Illegal motion on the offense, unnecessary roughness on the defense. We're going to play it over. Here it comes right at the end of the play. He's obviously out of bounds, yeah. and there is the penalty. And offsetting they are penalties. offsetting, so we'll bring it back. And that's one of the reasons for that wide six foot white stripes the players know where the sidelines are. So that once you get into that large white area, there's no question in your mind. That's right. And the only people supposedly allowed in that wide area is a coach, someone to take stats, and one player. That is the only group allowed in that area. Of course, that is not always adhered to as we check both sidelines to say that there are a few more in the white in area. In fact, everyone is supposed to be behind the white line that's that's drawn on the green uh, AstroTurf there. And as you see, I don't think there may be five people behind the white line. That, of course, is just for safety. It's for the safety of the players so that if somebody gets tossed out of bounds and they are bringing it downfield again, I thought, Charlie, that the rule was that in a, in a uh, sportsmanlike conduct that that overrules the motion penalty. And that's what the call is going to be. And so the ball goes to the 29 yard line. And Kansas City has a first down. Kansas City trailing 17 to 35. Stephen Bass is incomplete at the 18 yard line. And now let's go to Bob Costas in New York for an update. Bob. Here at the Coliseum, Chris Smith gets the call and has seven yards to the 22 yard line. So it's going to be third down and three. Ron Foster makes the tackle. Ron Foster and Mike Noble make the tackle for the Raiders. Carries to the 22 yard line. As we just begin to wind down, uh, moving on the four minute mark, reminding a day that started four o'clock this morning with <laughs> the earthquake of August. Timing pattern and the receiver, the intended receiver, Eric Brown, was going inside. And uh, Matt Stevens, the quarterback, thought that he would be going outside into the right-hand corner. That's where he was throwing it. Ricky Williams had the coverage. It's incomplete. And Steve it's going to be fourth and three. I'm sorry, Charlie. Stevens really just had to take a little bit more time. What the receiver was trying to do is set a defensive back up. Uh, in, that, in that instance, all you do is you get in, in front of a defensive back. Stop. The defensive back who's trailing has got to stop with you. And then you take off because you know when you want to go. That creates separation. And uh, when he slowed up, Stevens threw the football. If he waited a bit, an extra beat, there would have been a score for the Chiefs. Fourth down and three. Stevens throws, has his man at the five-yard line, and it is incomplete. 
Kenny Nash, the intended receiver, and Rod Hill, formerly Dallas's number one draft choice from five years ago. And then with Buffalo and Detroit, the experienced defender. And it seems that he gets to the football. Nice play on the part yes. of Rod Hill. He gets to the ball just as the receiver Nash does, and an incomplete pass, and watch the reaction of Stevens. Steelers have the ball. First down at their own 22-yard line, taking over on downs. And they have the lead 35-17, and they have three minutes and 59 seconds to run off of the clock. Vince Evans, who has thrown for two touchdowns, and he has rushed for one, has had a very good afternoon. Rick Calhoun, the rookie out of Cal State Fullerton, who is Detroit's number nine draft choice this year, stopped by James Harrell. Who uh, was with Detroit last year? And he, your veteran. Yes, and he started 15 of 16 games for the Lions a year ago. Charlie was cut this past year in training camp, so a veteran of uh, the wars in the NFL and uh, has been a good player in the past. Eight of three, second down and seven. And now, of course, the Raiders will use all of the 30-second clock. And if possible, they would like to stay on the ground to keep the clock moving. Of course, what they do in first and second down dictates how much they can stay on the ground. Now they'll give it to the second back through. And here's Calhoun. He has the first down. The clock continues to move. Calhoun continues to move to the 44-yard line. He picks up 18 yards on the play. Mark at the 43-yard line. 16 seconds on the 30-second clock. We haven't had a 30-second violation. There's 13 seconds on the 30 second clock when the officials stop it. And they may want to adjust with his watch and the game clock. That's an offense delay the game. The 30 second clock operator did not start the clock. The field judge was timed it on the field. That's a five yard penalty for delay. Now that's, a, uh, you know, I don't agree with that call. Uh, because, the, because the quarterback is obviously going, they look down and they look at the 30 second clocks and that's what they're going by. Of course, his job is to. Uh, that's a mistake by, by whatever clock uh, uh, runner there is or if there's a malfunction in the clock. It's nobody's fault, but certainly Vince Evans and the Raiders should not be penalized for it. He's going by the clock. His job now is to run yeah. it down to the nub and no, not snap yeah. it at 16 seconds. No, it should just be a warning. No, that's, uh, that I don't agree with at all. And we're moving now on the two-minute warning, and if we just wait a second, and we've got it. That's it. That's the whistle, two-minute warning. The Raiders lead the Chiefs 35 17. We'll be back with the last two minutes of action and a smile from Ben Dright in a moment. I get to make the apology because I have made more mistakes in my time and I am better at apologies. On the right is the head coach, Frank Gans. On the left, that's Homer Smith, who is the offensive coordinator. Now, if they do look a little bit alike, yeah, and, and I must say, in all honesty, though, that's my fault because I know Frank Gans and I know Homer Smith, and I should have mentioned it much earlier. But I tell you, when you take the hat off and, and the headset. That's right. Rick Calhoun out to the 43-yard line. And that reminds me, I remember a game years ago working with George Ratterman in Denver, and they, in the fourth quarter they changed quarterbacks, and I didn't pick it up for about three plays. And then finally I said, oh, they've changed quarterbacks. It started an apology, and George said, well, that's, he said, it's understandable. He said, they're both 6'4", and they both are right-handed. <laughs> and he gets all through this thing trying to get me off the hook, and I said, but John, he's wearing 12. <laughs> and the other one. Our statistician. Good job, everybody. And here's the bootleg to the near side. And Evans goes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, as the day goes on, he is safe at the 41 yard line as he slides for 19 yards. He's got to be tired. And, and oh, yeah. He's got to be commended for, uh, uh, for, for playing very well this afternoon. He's a 32 year old quarterback. Not old by quarterback standards in many instances, but he's been out of the game for a couple of years. And he showed a lot of guts yes. by his play this afternoon. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. And Kansas City has a timeout. As Chris Lindstrom, who we said, uh, Tom Flores, the head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders. He, by the way, has four Super Bowl rings, one for Kansas City. Did not play in Super Bowl four, but was Lynn Dawson's backup quarterback in that ball game. Interesting. Yeah, you knew that. And he has uh, one is in a, a couple is an assistant coach in the Los Angeles Raiders. Bob Levy, our director, by the way, is the coordinating director for the Olympic Games on NBC in 1988. This time, a year from now, will be in Seoul, and we hope that you join us there. That's that's an early.
Rick Calhoun, the ball carrier. Three yards to the 36. Cornelius Dozier makes Frank Gans of the Kansas City Chiefs his first year as the head coach, and his record for the Chiefs now one and two. And Tom Floyd of the Los Angeles Raiders, they now are three and zero. Oh. As today's game does count in the standings, don't forget the league championship series begins Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. The San Francisco Giants versus the Eastern Division champion, the St. Louis Cardinals. All of the baseball action right here on NBC Sports. This is Charlie Jones, Jimmy Cephalo. The final score here, the Los Angeles Raiders 35, the Kansas City Chiefs 17. Charlie, uh, a sloppy day, of course. There you see the lineup tonight on NBC, which we'll enjoy. Next week, Charlie, you and I will be in Indianapolis for the Jets-Colts game. The Jets and the Colts, so be sure to join us for that one. From the heat of the Coliseum, Charlie and Jimmy, so long, everybody.